Some of you might remember the case from Judge Simpson's courtroom that locals called the hoarder house. I mean, technically, I guess it is. It's just such a derogatory term. We do have an update, and they are still fighting. But for those of you who may not remember it, and it may be new to you, I'm not going to give you too much information. So it can be a surprise because it's quite a journey, an emotional roller coaster, a dumpster fire, if you will. So sit back, relax, grab your popcorn, and enjoy. All right, where are we on this case? Um, I don't think that we are any further than we were two weeks ago. There was a court hearing day before yesterday uh, in 14A1. Um, a new order for the zoning violations was issued along with, um, I believe, an order that allows the township to add more taxes to um, my escrow account, which I'm going to end up paying. This guy just is not going to clean this up, and he has, re he has not responded to any previous court orders. So I'm asking for the forfeiture. Mr. and Mrs. Cox, any response? Yes, Your Honor. I, um, uh, I'm sorry that he feels that way. That's not how, that's not my take on uh, what happened when we were in court. Um, two days ago, we were granted two weeks um, to have it cleared up. I discussed with the prosecutor and Mr. Toth. We had a private meeting. Uh, we he had uh, some paperwork the prosecutor did uh, written up that we agreed to my wife and I both and we signed it and we went into the into before the judge just to get that into the record and it was us admitting that we were uh, in violation and accepting that there were fines that were assessed and those fines are to be uh, he, he removed in the event that after this two this two week period we are in uh, accordance with the ordinance. So uh, I am cleaning it up. We I, I had explained to the judge that uh, we had a large. Let yard me sale stop you. I have a copy. Really well, so well, uh, I intend to do that again, and uh, the property will be cleaned up. Okay, I have a copy. I don't have a signed copy of the order. I'm presuming this is the order that it with I did fresh hour that everybody's talking about. But there's another hearing June 6th at 11 a.m. is Correct. my understanding. Yes. To sir. determine whether or not there is actual compliance. Correct. That's correct. Mr. Carroll, you understand that sir i do understand that but i also understand there's been at least one previous order that's almost verbatim of this one that hasn't happened and i also understand this order and after talking with mr toast and the prosecutors they intend on june 7th if the property is not cleaned up to go in there and clean it up and charge my tax escrow count another twelve thousand dollars and i i'm well, I don't know. I don't know what they intend upon doing, but I. You're asking me to do something that there's another court. My colleague, Judge Freshour, is overseeing it and will hear a case on June 6. Your Honor, this is Mrs. Cox. Could I speak a moment? Well, Go ahead. Thank you. Um, the um, financially, as Mr. Carroll will say, we are completely um, even and up to date on everything for this property. We set for that last clean, which was in much more invasive, taking three times and a semi being moved. Um, I am paying monthly payments for that, my husband and I. Um, I am on this as well this time, which um, makes a very big difference to my husband as well. So um, 
I this will be cleaned up one way or the other. We also have a person going to be coming out and giving us an uh, estimate to okay, help my so husband with folks, the siding piece. Folks, folks, listen, everybody can tell me everything that they want. I can tell you right now, I'm not going to do anything until the review happens that is on June 6th. Because there's an order basically indicating that certain costs need to be paid, the property needs to be claimed up and brought in compliance. If it's brought into compliance, I think this action falls away. That's not going to be reviewed as to whether or not it's in compliance under Judge Freshour's orders until the June 6th. So... You know, I don't know that the township's going to go in there on the 7th. I don't know anything about that. It doesn't say that in the order. I'm just saying there's not going to be a review until June 6th by the 1483 District Court by Judge Freshour. So I'm going to give you my next available date after the 6th, which is going to be the 16th of June. So I'm adjourning this out to June 16th. Thank you, Your 2023 Honor. at 9 a.m. And we'll have to see what happens on the 6th. That's the best I can do, folks. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, here, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Here. Patrick Cox, Laura Cox, they're not here. Would you like to take a default, sir? Uh, Your Honor, to be fair to the court, um, there's a related case. I put in a, a request for a vacating of the trial date because the related case in 14A4, she gave him another two weeks to get that property cleaned up. Uh, okay. Just, be, just because of the court's order last time. Otherwise, I would take the default. So Judge Freshour gave until the 30th? Gave her to, gave until the 27th. Okay. Then let me and put the this to the 30th. And township I'll adjourn meeting. this out June 30th, 2023 at 9 a.m. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Lawrence Caro versus Patrick Cox and Laura Cox. Lawrence Caro here. Yeah, one. Patrick and Laura Cox are here. Patrick, yeah. I'm okay. Here. All right, this is a termination case. And where yes, are sir. we on this? Uh, Your Honor, um, I implore the courts, so wisdom of Solomon on this one. It's a really tough case. Um, I will tell you up front that uh, Laura has paid all of the payments. There is not a financial um, deficit except for the assessment for a cleanup that the township put on it last year, but I had made arrangements with uh, Laura to make those in equal monthly installments and she is making those. However, uh, since the last time the township went out to that property and cleaned it up and assessed my taxes, they put it on my tax bill uh, and I had to pay $15,000 uh, and my escrow has increased my mortgage payment by $2,500 uh, for the past um, assessment that the township put on as taxes, which was allowable by uh, the court order. And they're anticipating that it's a tax, so it's gonna happen again. And I'm just, I'm just losing my shirt right now on this. We went to court again on Tuesday and another order was issued by 14A4 allowing the township to go back in and clean the property up because they gave them and that was filed in february and it's still not cleaned up and she finally just said township go clean it up and assess the um uh, assess the coxes unfortunately the order that um the township has proposed to that judge would allow them once again to put that um assessment on my taxes which means i'm going to end up paying it not the coxes um so I, 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 I'm imploring your, your words of wisdom. I can't get them to clean it up. The township can't get them to clean it up. The court can't get them to clean it up. Mr. Mr. Cox, what do you want to say? Yeah, this is uh, Patrick Cox. I, um, what Larry's saying is, is largely true, um, but the 
the reality is that we don't ever get it cleaned all the way up. So I think that that the I just want to say that and meaning that it's not something that I'm just ignoring. It's something that I have struggled to um, get done within the time that um, was allotted. And I believed I had enough time and and I was just wrong. So the property is is um, in much better shape than it was. It um, I mean, to some people, they they may say that 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 it's not, but it's just not. It's it's just not seeing the property the way that I see it because I walk it. And so the majority of what was nearer the street remains. Oh. And so I think that it just kind of casts a, an ugly look over the rest of the place. But okay. having said that, so the, the how truth long is, is that Fresh Hour, how long did Judge Fresh Hour give till the township's going to come in and clean it up? She, she essentially did immediately, but uh, uh, the township, um, I'm sorry, Larry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but just that um, uh, I don't think she put an actual time on it. Your Honor. I think she just said they have the authority to do that. And I did ask uh, in court with uh, the prosecutor uh, it, how long that might be before they came, because I I'm fully committed to uh, them not and coming. And what did they tell you? He said he said it might be. He said it'd probably be about two weeks because his um, uh, the the guy from the the township is on vacation, so um, he won't even be back. And then attempt to schedule it for. You're your I Honor? don't know the exact amount of time, but he he thought it'd be two weeks. Your Honor, um, yes, sir. I, I did speak with Mr. Toth, who's the zoning uh, administrator for York Township, and he did tell me that he has a July 10th date tentatively scheduled. Um, again, mm -hmm. I have a motion uh, before the court. I, I don't even know if I have standing, but I have a motion that I submitted before the court. Um, asking the court to prohibit the township from assessing my taxes and find a way to collect from the Coxes. I don't know if that will be successful. I don't know if I have standing, but if this is allowed to continue, um, I will lose that house. All right, but your that motion is not before me, is it? No, it's before Judge Anna Frau Fresh Freehouse, Hour. Fresh Hour, because uh, she's yes. the one that made the ruling and she's the one that's going to um, approve right. the election. So when, so when is that motion set? It's not set. I haven't heard anything from her again. I don't even know if I have standing. Okay, I don't. Got it. Okay. So here's and what I honored. here's what I'm gonna do. You realize yep. you've got ten days to do that, but the thing that I'm also gonna do in this case is I'm going to allow the um plaintiff to amend the complaint to request damages it's another thing in terms of getting paid so you, what you'll have to do sir is you'll have to pay the difference in the um filing fee for the damages Okay. Portion of it. Okay. And then uh, I'm going I, to adjourn this out to the 14th. If it's not cleaned up and the township has done it, if you have a township bill, then I'm going to allow those as damages against the Cox in this matter. Okay. Um, uh, I, I'm not sure I entirely understand that, but. Okay. But so here's, I here's the bottom to line to it. You, you guys are supposed to clean that property up. The property has to be cleaned up. The township, yes, Judge Freshour has ordered that the township do it if you guys don't do it. Correct. And plaintiff in this case is saying, well, if the township comes in and does it, then I owe the money and you guys are supposed to pay it back when you're the ones that are supposed to be keeping it clean. So what I'm right. saying 
is if you guys don't get the property cleaned up, I'm going to give a judgment, a monetary judgment, not only for the property, but a monetary judgment to the plaintiff for whatever the costs are in cleaning it up. I understand. All right. That's more than fair. Would this court would this court entertain a motion prohibiting the township from assessing my taxes? That is not my case. You'll have to bring that before Judge Freshour. I uh, appreciate it, Your Honor. All righty. July 14th, 9 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. That Thank you. Ends our nine o'clock block. We'll get ourselves set up for the 10 o'clock quarter standing brief recess. Court calls the case People versus Lawrence Carroll versus Patrick Cox. Good morning, Your Honor. Dan Troy appearing on behalf of Lawrence Carroll. Yes. Yes, good, yeah. good morning, Mr. Troy. <laughs> that was, you know, that helped a great deal. My blood pressure came down quite a bit. All right. <laughs> So, um, Your Honor, I'm, I understand you're very familiar with this case. <clears throat> uh, I'll try to bring you, um, and I would say you probably know more than I do, but I would like to bring to your honor's attention what I understand has happened uh, since the last hearing a couple of weeks ago. I will also know for the record, Mr. Carroll is present. If the court has any questions, also Township Council is present, as well as the Township yes. Building Official. Um, as I think the court knows, my client filed a, a forfeiture action, and the forfeiture uh, notice of forfeiture and the forfeiture complaint are alleging that there are uh, non-compliance issues with township code, mainly the International Property Maintenance Code. Um, and, and I think your honor was informed two weeks ago, Judge Freshour in Chelsea um, issued an order permitting the township to go in and clean up the, uh, the the yard, which apparently has a lot of you know masonry contracting debris. And the order also permits the township to replace the siding on a side of the house that was removed by the buyer over a year ago or about a year ago and uh, is also a, a code issue. So I just found out yesterday from speaking with Township Council that the township did in fact go and clean up the yard, um, but they have not uh, addressed the siding. And frankly, that's a very, very difficult issue for the township to do. I also learned yesterday that uh, on top of the 14,000 assessment we got last year when this happened, we're going to get a new $13,000 assessment based on what just happened, and the siding issue had not been resolved. Uh, so, uh, Your Honor, in some respects, this is similar to what the hearing you just had, in that what was presented to Your Honor is, hey, there's a condition on the property that has to be solved. We have a different judge saying, here's how you do it, township, you can go in and take care of it. And the township did do that, except that the township has not replaced the siding, so the Judge Freshour's order and the property violations are still in effect as we speak today as to the siding at a minimum. And I will add, by the way, I'm assuming the other outside issues were addressed by the township. Um, Mr. Toth may um, contradict me on that, but that's my assumption. Um, Your Honor, after going through this with my client at some length, uh, I, I was told and would like to confirm that Your Honor has suggested you would be open to us filing an amended pleading. And what I would like to do, uh, if the court would permit it, is to amend our complaint to uh, keep the property violation issue because there's still a siding issue. And also because this is recurring, uh, we think it's going to just pop right up again in the next you know, week, two or month as it has over the last four years. And also to demand that we be paid the assessments, which are now like $27,000. Um, this is a huge problem for Mr. Carroll. Uh, he is between a rock and a hard place. Um, he, you know, without relief from this court, he's going to keep getting whipsawed. Uh, with the township actions against Mr. Cox uh, in perpetuity. And just Mr. Cox seemed incapable of maintaining that property to code. And I, I think your honor may be aware from pictures, it's not a close case. He just, we don't get it, but all indications are he's just unwilling or incapable of satisfying the township. And the township I think has given him, um, you know, all the leeway they can. So what I'm seeing in the future for Mr. Caro uh, without relief in this court is pretty bleak. It's going to be just one township action over another, and every year, you know, 13, 14, 15 grand assessed, uh, which is which means he's going to lose that property because he he can't continue as a seller under a land contract with his own mortgage and have to deal with that kind of expense. So I don't think there's any dispute that um, the land contract buyers are on the hook for the township expenses, which are again now around 27 grand. 
Uh, what we want to do then is make that claim, which uh, I acknowledge is not before the court at the moment, but the land contract forfeiture rule clearly empowers the court to allow amended pleadings. Uh, I think that's probably the only way to force the issue. And if there's any hope that this land contract can be successfully you know, played out, uh, it's got to start with some consequences for the Coxes for just being unwilling to um, satisfy the township. So I, I, Your Honor, again, I think you probably know more about the case than I do. I've done my best to come up to speed and come up with a solution. Um, but that is my proposal that the court um, you know, acknowledge that we have leave to file an amended complaint that would allow the Coxes to respond and their rights would be protected. But we can then go forward and join the issues that really are affecting Mr. Carroll, that being the continued property violation at a minimum, the siding and these assessments, which are now, uh, you know, in the stratosphere as far as land contracts go. And while, Jan, I know it's over 25, this is not a, a money judgment issue. This is a uh, redemption issue if the court were to give us that judgment uh, once we had a hearing. Anybody else want to address the court on this? All right. Here's uh, yes, Ron, this is, I'm sorry. Go ahead. This is Patrick Cox, Ron. I, um, um, I, uh, we were assessed, uh, fines for the first cleanup that, that took place. And when we found out about being assessed that amount, it had been worked into our, uh, our summer taxes. And I don't know how or why that happened. I, maybe that's just how it happens, but that was something that, um, that, that we just, we just found out that that's how it was being taken care of. And we spoke with Mr. Carroll and he wanted to work, uh, with us yet to see if there was a way to, um, to keep things going. So it, some numbers that he put together that we we trust in we have no issues with what it, the numbers are based on what it would cost him over the long term we pay um a a a second payment to him every month on the uh, every two weeks to buy down what that cost is that was associated with the first cleanup and um and and that was all at, at his request and so we've satisfied that and we've made every payment i did have this issue again and it came up and uh they came out and they did clean the property um and i wasn't aware of what that assessment charge was until just now when he said that it was thirteen thousand. um and i sir, don't know if that sir yes, mr. mr cox let me let me just stop you for a moment sure. um let me just say this. <laughs> when I was doing this lean docket, I, I've had this before me before. So this this property is not this. Uh, none of this is really a surprise for me. Um, I think two things are happening here, which are causing a problem. Mr. Troika, I think, is correct that some of the issues that are being dealt with by my colleague Judge Freshour can be dealt with in this case. When Mr. Carroll came before me last time we were here, his fundamental issue was really getting this assessment again and trying to think of a way in which that assessment um, wouldn't be as against him because he doesn't think he should pay it because he's not really causing this problem. Whether I agree with that or not, and how that would happen, that mechanism, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> but what is, what is really complicating this, in my opinion, is trying to have two judges resolve the same issue effectively um, in two different forums um, with in two different forms. So in that regard, here's what I'm going to actually order. Um, and I, the, this judge will cooperate to the extent I can. 
I think one of us, either Judge Freshour or myself, will need to handle both of these cases, <laughs> plain and simple. That way, we don't have a problem with what needs to be enforced or anything along those lines. I would allow the plaintiff to amend their complaint to bring all of those issues in, bring that other case, I guess, here. I because I'm not going to bind Judge Fresh Howard to try to take one of my cases. I certainly would be willing to take the case. So I need somebody to raise that. Certainly I could call Judge Fresh Howard and find out, but I need somebody to raise that to Judge Fresh Howard. We would then touch base and the case would just come over to me. That seems like, mm -hmm. from my standpoint, the better way to handle this whole thing. You may not like the rulings you get that come out of it, but at least... It's all in one spot, and you can look at one judge and say they did it wrong. All right. <laughs> Anybody have any uh, objection to that process? Um, and Your Honor, I'll state I, I do not. Um, Township Council is, is present. I don't. I mean, they're actually the party before Judge Freshour. Um, Larry Carroll is not a party in that proceeding. Uh, I don't mean to put them on the spot, but if uh, I, I guess I'd like to know if there if, if Township Council is okay with that because. Uh, Mr. They, Lillig never wants to see me. That's okay. <laughs> no. Your Honor, Your Honor, Victor Lillig, uh, as you know, I represent York Township. Um, yeah, you know, frankly, the uh, the case before Fresh Hour, Your Honor, it's it, it's done uh, at this time, except the uh, requirement that uh, Mr. Cox put the siding back up on the on the property. That's not an uh, an enforcement issue that the, the town the township's not going to take care of that. The township will go onto the property and clean up the property when it has to, okay, and only when it has to. And in this particular case, it's become it's become necessary. So we've done that again. So that particular violation, at least for the moment, is 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 resolved. Uh, however, we don't have any uh, any expectation that that's going to continue to be resolved. We we fully expect that Mr. Cox, as long as he's living there, will probably begin accumulating uh, materials again in violation of the um, uh, in violation of the township ordinance and frankly the court's order at this point. So, I mean, I don't have an objection to um, one judge handling this case. I would just indicate to the court that from the township's perspective at this point, we're pretty much done until we have to go back in and enforce the order again. So, in, in your honor, if I may. Right, but and and that I think is where the problem can come in in terms of enforcing the order and coming back again. Um, and that's what I'm trying to prevent because you'll be headed back into one court. Then next thing you know, this is Mr. Carroll coming into here to do this. It just doesn't seem to me to make any sense to do it that way. So, fair enough, John. And you guys are, you know, the last three times you guys have been here anyway. So I have two here. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so Robert, why don't I do this? Go ahead. What were gonna I was just going to say, uh, as far as the, you know, uh, administratively, how this works, I mean, uh, do, do you contact Judge Freshour or? Uh, um, I we... will let Judge Freshour know, but it would be best if the township let Judge Freshour know or something, the parties here, let Judge Freshour know, and then we'll touch base. Um, right. I'll try to do I'll reach out. I'll reach out to her administrator, Your Honor. All right. So I'm going to adjourn this to August 18th is my next. Yes. August 18th, 2023 at 9 a.m. And that way it'll allow you to get what documents you need here. I'm sure the, the two courts, once they're contacted, we can then get that, get the file over here if necessary and, and start moving this along in a more streamlined fashion. Yes, okay. and Your Honor, I'm sorry, let me, if I might, Your Honor, um, there is actually a hearing that's scheduled before Judge Frushauer. Uh, on the 30th of August. Okay. Now, now, if Mr. Carroll, okay, filed a motion in that case. He's not a party to the case. And so I'm not certain. Yeah, I know. 
Okay. All right. So yeah. in any event, that's scheduled for the yeah. Mr. Carroll, I think it indicated he had filed the motion, was looking for me to rule. I couldn't rule on it. And I I knew he was in I I knew he was filing a motion. I didn't know when it was scheduled. But yes. so that's set for the 30th. Yes, Your Honor. Then and that's set before Judge Fresh Hour. Yes, it is. And so if everything were to come over to me, then Judge Freshour wins because then she doesn't have that hearing. I don't think she's going to have an objection. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, Your Honor, we, we can address that motion on the 18th. I mean, not hear it, uh, but we may need to withdraw. We file it. That was not that was prepared by my client in Popper. I, I don't actually yeah. know what it says, and, and uh, but we will have an opportunity to meet with the Honor before we have to deal with that motion uh, and it's possible we'll in the meantime have worked things out with the township. All right, very good. Then what I'll do, I think everybody has their marching orders then, and I'll see you guys on the 18th. And now we, we will in the meantime, file an amended complaint. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So that's the 18th, 18th at what time, Your Honor? That'll be set at nine o'clock, you may nine o'clock block. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, folks. Blue Heron Point Apartments, Lawrence Carroll versus Patrick Cox. Good morning, Your Honor. Dan Troy, appearing on behalf of the plaintiff, Lawrence Carroll. Plaintiff Lawrence Carroll here. Patrick Cox, I'm here. All right. Laura Cox is I here. have had, so that the parties are aware, I have had the four, looks like, uh, cases, municipal civil infractions, I believe they are, that Judge Freshour had assigned to me. So I now have all of those cases because I didn't have enough to do. Um, so I have all of those cases. So where are we now on this, folks? Um, <clears throat> Your Honor, a few things have happened since our last meeting with you about three weeks ago. Uh, as Your Honor just noted, we did consolidate the cases. Uh, you might recall Mr. Carroll was getting whipsawed between the enforcement proceeding and the forfeiture proceeding, so we've addressed that issue. Um, we also filed an amended uh, complaint, and in this case, we're seeking that the Coxes actually pay the assessments that the township has made to clean up, and that's about $24,000. Uh, and Your Honor, we filed a motion for entry forfeiture judgment, which is, uh, we don't have a hearing date yet, uh, but that is our effort to finally get relief here. Um, I think the court is aware that for four years we've had this problem uh, with the Coxes simply incapable, apparently, of keeping their property up to uh, maintenance standards. Uh, because of that, the township has filed several uh, enforcement proceedings. That's resulted in cost assessed back to Mr. Carroll. And it's just basically a um, a situation which we we need to ultimately so we have requested that in the hearing that will be before your honor when the court schedules it um so that we um what we're asking uh and again we'll argue this later but we're just so the court understands we're going to be asking for a redemption during which the consists can basically put up or shut up because we just can't be in a situation where every six months we're we're getting sued again uh and they're unwilling or unable to keep their property up to code um so we're hopeful that that will put the thing on a path toward either compliance by the Coxes or um, getting them out of the property. Uh, one or the other has to happen. All right, Mr. Cox, anything you want to say? Uh, not specifically, sir, no. All right, well, I guess part of the issue, the property has been, I see Mr. Toth here, or Officer Toth, the the property's been cleaned up at this point in time, correct? Your Honor, if I might address that, uh, Victor Lillick on okay. behalf of York Township in those cases, Your Honor, uh, the township cases. So it's uh, reported as of yesterday that uh, actually we did clean up the property, but uh, actually it's reported as of yesterday, and we have some pictures that they are starting to accumulate junk on the property again already. We have uh, judgment in the York Township cases. Uh, my intent at this time, Your Honor, uh, would probably be to file a, uh, a motion for uh, an order to show cause and contempt uh, for a violation of those orders. 
Uh, and I guess uh, if it's possible, we would try to have those on the same date that uh, Mr. Troika wants to have his uh, 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 his 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 motion date, Your Honor. Good. I think that might be. I need a second sheet. Okay. Mr. Cox. Yes, sir. Are more things appearing on the property? I mean, absolutely, absolutely not. I did know that that was going to be Mr. Toad's claim um, because I saw him yesterday scurrying about. But it is, uh, they did come and they did the clean. But I have, and I'm not done yet, I've gone through um, the property collecting what was left. And it's it's substantial. I was just trying to mow and there's stuff that I'm not complaining about it, but there's just stuff that was all over the yard. And there's a lot of things that, that they that they did not take. So that's just me cleaning up uh my yard. And um it, there is nothing new that's been brought to the property. That's just not that's just not true. Um, so I'm it, remaining in compliance as far as, as that goes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I continue to, my attempts are still to, to clean the property thoroughly. All right. Um, Mr. Uh, Lilek, how long will it take you to file your, your, um, motion? <clears throat> Well, Your Honor, I can put that together today, probably. Okay. And get, right. I mean, if I, I think I could probably file that via email, correct? Uh, is that acceptable to the court now? Or? That, that with the court, if you send it to Ms. Weidling and then send it also to the clerk's office, that will be the actual filing of that. All, All right, fourteen eight. Clerk's office. Um, and then, Mr. Cox. Have you received a copy of the motion for entry of forfeiture judgment? Yes. Yes. Okay. How are you going to answer that motion? Uh, yeah. I, I guess I'm not sure how we do that, Judge Sinspun. Okay. You would have to file a written answer stating, in essence, answering the allegations uh, put forth by the plaintiff and basically stating to the court what your position is on the forfeiture. Yes, then we will answer that motion. Okay. How long will it take you to file the answer to that? Uh, seven days. Okay. I just want to seek uh, counsel for that. Got it. I'm going to suggest to you, if you're going to seek counsel for that, that you also seek counsel regarding the show cause motions that are coming forth. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. So I'm going to indicate that your answer to the forfeiture motion is going to be due. If you're going to get an attorney, I'm going to make that due by the 29th, by August 29th. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. And then I'm also going to indicate that that's also to the forfeiture motion as well as to any show cause motion. So I'm building some time in there so that you can get those when Mr. Lilick files them and all of those answers can be filed by that day. Thank you. Uh, you understand Honor. that? Yes. All right. Then what I'll do is I'll set a hearing. Let's give them Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday. Okay, hang on. Tuesday, September 5th, or I can take it out further. Um, they get everything in the meal on the 29th, but I got a holiday coming in there. What, what's our next date after? So after that, it would be Tuesday the 12th? The 12th. Or the 19th. All right. I can set a hearing on all the motions and the uh, request for show cause or the show cause and request for an entry of a other relief. I can set that for September 12th. 
if that worked with the parties. What time, Your Honor? Because I do have a docket at 11 o'clock in front of uh, Judge Frushauer, I think. Is that, um, are you doing that docket in person or? No, that should be Zoom, Your Honor. All right. So what I will do is I'll set this hearing on the motion for September 12, 2023, 9 a.m. That will be in person here at 14A1. There are rooms out here where you could Zoom in to Judge Freshour and I'll accommodate that certainly for you. Thank Your you, Honor, is there ability for us to attend Zoom because I will be in Illinois? Um, somebody's going to have to be here. Is Mr. Cox going to be here? I I will be here and available. All right. So you need to be here. Um, I will. I don't like to do that, Mrs. Cox, but I will allow you to appear via Zoom. Thank as you, long as Mr. Here. Cox is here. I, I will be, and thank you for allowing her that. Um, Your Honor, did you say September 12th at 9 a.m.? Yes, sir. Um, Your Honor, one other housekeeping thing. My client, um, when he was without counsel, filed a motion against the township in the enforcement proceeding, which was scheduled for August 30th. We're going to which all that without prejudice uh, at the moment, and I'm not even sure if that date carried over onto your calendar. Uh, but I wanted Mr. Lilick to know uh, that he doesn't need to file a response, and that we're not expecting a hearing on August 30th. Right. Thank the thank you for that, Mr. Truck. The the August 30th hearing because the cases got transferred, that also got canceled. Okay. So we were going to reset it, but we won't reset it if you're withdrawing the motion. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, one last thing, I just want to be clear for the court and the Coxes that there's an order for them to replace siding on the house that's separate and apart from the accumulation of clutter outside. Uh, we'll discuss that on September 12th, but uh, Your Honor should be aware that that still hasn't been done and that is part of what will be before the court. And that right. will be a part of the show cause order too, Your Honor. I would... Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll try to deal with everything on that day. All right, folks. Thank you. Thank you. you. You may be seated. Okay. Oh, what a group. <laughs> Is that? Why is there a door open? Do you know? Airflow. Huh? I said airflow. Airflow? So, <laughs> what is the HVAC bro? HVAC bro? I'm just guessing. I don't like your guess. Strong Future Homes versus Latasha Montgomery. Come on, you can come on up. State your name. Natasha Montgomery. Okay, where are we on this case, folks? We're here for a settlement conference. Yes. We. Um, it's my understanding that the court is equipped to meet with the parties and help us meet a mutually agreeable resolution, which I don't think we will be able to do on our own. Agree with that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, you don't have to agree to it. Um, this is a termination case, right? Mm -hmm. No, I don't want to be terminated. <laughs> I don't agree with that. Okay, so let me ask you this. You don't wish to move from the premises, is that? No. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to ask you to do is have a seat. I'm going to try to take care of some other matters, and then I'll meet with the party, see if we can resolve this short of a trial. Okay. okay? All right, thank, thank you. you. Good call. I said I was guessing. All right. All right. I'm guessing on this one too. Strong Future Homes versus O'Neill Jennings Jr. Can you speak to the plaintiff? May I? Yes, sir. This is pretty early in, in this process, Your Honor, and there was an issue of payments 
not being received. I think you brought us in so that they would have a chance to pull together any proof of payment. And we brought a new ledger and I have folks ready to testify or discuss with whichever the court prefers. All right. Your name? O'Neill Jennings. Hey, Mary Ann Jennings. Okay. So you brought all your receipts regarding yes, payments? Yes, ma'am. Sir. Okay. Have you provided copies of those to? Well, why don't we go have a seat and while you're handling other things, go over everything together and see if we've got it worked out. Apparently he wants to run this. <laughs> okay, so the answer to that question is a no. You haven't given those, no. right? Okay, so why don't I go on to other matters? <laughs> and Connor, sometimes your, your thought presses are simply brilliant you know i'm thinking all right so what happened is is that i'm going to do some other things and then you can get those receipts to them they brought a new ledger they'll be able to go through it with you all right, all right. and we'll somehow or another i think come to a figure and, yeah because i okay? got what i need if i need something else i'll have it now what I said, if I need some more money, I have it now. If you need more money, you yes. have it now? Yes. So you can, once we come to a figure, you think you can get this paid yes. off? Okay. Thank you. I like that. How come you didn't say that? I'm so excited to see you. You're excited to see me? Only because I seen you on court TV the other day. <laughs> I snapped pictures. I'm like, that's the judge. I'm <laughs> well, thank you. I'm excited to see you too. I guess. I'm tired of being a celebrity, I guess. Do you want to? Here. Yeah. All right, third time's a charm. Don't call these guys. <laughs> no, okay. I don't know about that charm thing. Hold oh, that. All right. The first one is on the docket. The rest are just what was going to be. Right. All right. Lawrence, uh, is it Craig Caro? Excuse me, versus Patrick Cox. Good morning, Your Honor. Dan Troike appearing on behalf of the plaintiff, Lawrence Caro. As the court is aware, this is consolidated with a township proceeding as well. Is Mr. Cox present? Mr. Lillick, can you put your appearance in? Oh, I can hear my case calls, Your Honor. Uh, Victor Lillick for York Township and York Township. Uh, yes, and that would be. People of York Township versus Laura Cox and Laura Cox cases ending in 503 and 504 and Township versus Patrick Cox. Cases in 505 Laura uh, Cox is on the Zoom. Yes. Mr. Where is she? Because I don't. Uh, camera's off. I can't see her. Ma'am, you'll need to turn your camera on. All right. Hold on, please. Okay. All right. Your name, ma'am? Patrick's ma on his way. He went to the Saline Courthouse, not realizing it had been changed to Ann Arbor. Okay. It was always here. But, okay. All right. So we have to await. Arrival. All right. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. We're to pass these matters. Okay. Good call, Ann. You just eventually I'll get something done. Rose Community Management versus Ron Johnson. Good morning. Your name's Ronald Johnson. All right. This was um, adjourned from last week, I believe. Yes. And so where are we now in this case? Well, um, I already put a down payment on another place, so she said it'll be ready in a couple of weeks. And okay, so what day will it be ready? 
he said two weeks. So from, from yesterday. From yesterday. Right. That would make it what the third day. Yesterday was the eleventh, so that would make September twenty fifth. We did enter a consensus, but I believe that the date on it, you held it, I don't exactly remember, but the date on it was, is sometimes not short. Right. So, sir, yes. I think the last time that we were here, we were talking about when you would move. So you are set to move the 25th. Is that right? Um, yeah. She, she said two weeks, so hopefully it'll be sooner, but you know, two, two okay, weeks. So <laughs> let, me, let me just try to understand what you're telling me. On the 25th, you're going to be out of the premises by the 25th. Is that, co is that correct? I hope so, yes. Okay, so if I change this judgment and say the 25th, you're going to move. Is that right? Well, why don't we do it till the 5th? Like what it was, October 5th. All right, well, why don't we do this? <laughs> why don't we do it to the 30th? Of what? That way they can have their unit back and the 30th of September. Sorry. Well, the 29th. 29th. Yeah. Okay. Will that work for you? Sounds good. All right, here's how I'm going to do this. I'm not going to do it as a consent judgment. I'm going to do this, finding no tribal issue after hearing convert the case to that. The defendant will move from the premises or it may issue after September, and I'm changing the date, September 29th, 2023. Thank you. All right. Yeah, there's another issue. Um, it seems that even though our manager has repeatedly refused to check, um, Mr. Johnson has like left them. Um, so I do have them and I've got to return them to him on the record. Um, well, hold on. You're returning them, why? Is that part of the agreement? Well, because, um, you know, when we come into court and you have a termination issue, we're not allowed to accept rent for a per forest issue. Correct. However, that doesn't mean that you're not entitled to it. Okay. So I just want to make it clear, whatever the agreement of the parties is, that's fine. But understanding what this court would rule, part of the reason you're not able to do that per Park Forest and other cases is because if you if it was a termination case, the acceptance of rent and determination are inconsistent with each other. Correct. That doesn't mean that once the case is resolved in some fashion that the landlord can't receive rent for that period in time for which you've held it or rejected it, if that makes sense to you. It does. So I have three checks, Your Honor, each for three or four checks. I apologize, each for $350 for June rent, for July rent, for August rent, for September rent. And for September rent? Yes. Okay. So He's entitled to stay through the end of September, so he should pay for those periods in time that he's in the unit is would be what this court would see the issue is unless somebody believes something different. Does that make sense Sounds to you, good. sir? Yes. So just so that we're clear, the rent that they've received, I if I had to have a hearing on it, I would award it to them because you're in the premises. You have a problem with that? No. Okay. That's, that's why I kept paying it. <laughs> I, I got it. So you can keep the rent. Thank you. Folks, I've signed the judgment. Thank you very much. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Um, that will typically be mailed to you, but they can take it out and process it. And then you can pick up a copy if you want. Okay. We'll make sure it gets down there. Okay. All right. Thank you, folks. And mailing is not important. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good to get to you. Any everything you want. Would you like to go back to? Is that Mr. Khan?
Snake. Snake. Cox. Ah. Mr. Cox. Well, you do the same. Take care. Did you tell Mr. Wasbury what I said? I did. Did you? He said I'll, he'll sign me every time if you can. Wonderful. See, everybody wins. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Yes. Okay, so I've lost Lilic. One. It's like hurting a squirrel. We'll never find him. <laughs> Can you see if Mr. Lilic is out somewhere? And then, and I have her and Mrs. Dodds, and then I. Okay, yeah. All right, court does call the case of Lawrence Carroll versus Patrick Cox and Laura Cox. Mr. Cox, if you can come up, um, you can have a seat at that table. That's fine. And the York Township case, you're going Yes, and also the York Township case. Okay. Go ahead. So, good morning, Your Honor. Dan Trika, appearing on behalf of the plaintiff, <clears throat> Lawrence Carroll, uh, in the civil forfeiture case. All right. And Victor Lillick on behalf of York Township and the York Township case, Your Honor. Your name, sir? Patrick Cox. All right. And Laura Cox, if you could just state your name, please, for me. Laura Cox. All right. Thank you. All right. Mr. Troika. And, Your Honor, I also note that Larry Caro is appearing uh, yeah. by Zoom. Uh, so, Your Honor is very familiar with this case in one form or another. It's been before this court or Judge Freshour over the last four years. Basic issue that keeps happening is that Mr. Cox, who resides at the premises, keeps accumulating materials outside the house. We don't know why he does it, um, but it has been a concern to the township. The township has repeatedly gotten orders, both from your honor and from Judge Freshour, to clean it up. Mr. Cox has repeatedly not cleaned up. As a result, the township goes in, they clean it up, and then they charge it back to the property. And Mr. Carroll has been stuck with um, about, about 12000 in already assessed taxes against the property based on the cleanup. And there's another 13850 that Judge Freshour authorized this summer which will be presumably added to the tax rolls in December. We might object to that, but that's just where we are at the moment. We have not had any control over what's happened in the property code enforcement cases. So Mr. Carroll, acting in Popur, filed a, a land contract forfeiture case uh, back, I think, in January. Um, the situation is unusual. Um, the Coxes, in fact, do make their monthly payments. They made their September payment. So, you know, we're not here telling the court that they're not making the regular installments under the land contract forfeiture. What we are here telling the court is that it's their obligation under the land contract to pay what we've been obligated to pay to the township, which is, uh, that's in my motion, it's 24000 and change. That's a cost that is expressly on the Coxes and not in Mr. Carroll. And we've asked the court to enter a forfeiture judgment that would require them to pay that amount um, in order to keep uh, possession and an interest in the property. We have to have some solution here. This is a situation that's just going to keep going on forever as long as nothing happens. So our proposal is the only one we can think of that's consistent with the law and that will force a solution. They're either going to pay what they're supposed to pay and comply, which is part of what we put into our request, or they're not. And if they don't, then we'll be back in here seeking possession with a forfeited land contract. It's not our desire to kick them out. It's not our desire to claim any equity in the property, although to be frank, we haven't seen the interior. We doubt there is equity at this point, but we got to solve this problem. Mr. Carroll can't be getting bills of twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000 every six months because Mr. Cox is incapable of keeping the property up to the standard of the code. I'm you know, all open to suggestions. I know your honor uh, is, um, um, you know, is a fair judge and also can be creative. I've done everything I can to think about this. I can't think of any other solution other than to get our forfeit for judgment and either they put up or shut up. I mean, we, we are at a point where this has gone on for four years. We can't have it keep going. 
Now, I wanted to address a point. I know it came up before I was counsel of record in the matter, and I just heard it in the last matter. Um, in a lot of these cases, there's a question about acceptance of payment after sending your notice. Uh, and in cases where it's a notice to quit for uh, a one month, you know, month to month tenancy, if you accept rent for a period after the termination, termination date in your notice, then you have essentially voided the notice under the Park Forest case. That comes up all the time. When I first got this case, the first thing I did was look for the law on land contract forfeiture. And there's only one case in the state of Michigan. And that case squarely says that when it is land contract forfeiture, not only are you permitted to accept payments after your notice of forfeiture, you are obligated to. You take them, you apply them to the balance. And, and we've done that. You know, we, they, They're credited for what they've paid if they are uh, able to do what they're supposed to do during the redemption period, then they'll get the benefit of their bargain. But the issue is we just can't keep having this problem come up. I'm not optimistic. We were in court not that long ago on August 18th. And uh, the, while the township will speak to this, I've seen the photos. The, the junk is accumulating again. It's growing like a fungus. It just happens. I don't see this ever stopping. Uh, so we're asking the court to grant our motion. I wanted to add a couple of technical things. Uh, we didn't get a response to our motion. We did send in a request for default last week. We didn't actually ask it to be entered. We asked it to go to your honor so you would know that we properly made a request for default since they did not get counsel. They did not file a response. They didn't do what you told them to do by last week, I think it was, or no, I think it was August 28th. They were supposed to do that. Um, two other things, which I'll tell you, uh, you know, as an officer of the court, I want to be straight and everything. In my motion, I requested a 30-day redemption. Uh, the rationale is that we're suffering damage on essentially a daily basis, uh, but I will acknowledge that the statute says it's going to be 90 or 180, and if the, you know, it would definitely be 90 if your court follows the statute because they've only paid about 245 out of the 280 balance. Uh, if the court would consider a shorter redemption based on these circumstances, by analogy, that does happen in mortgage foreclosures and, uh, and the termination of tenancies, uh, but for land contract forfeiture, you know, the statute says 90 or 180. If the, if the court does not believe there's an equitable basis for de uh, deviating from that, then it would be 90 days. Um, and one last point in the order I proposed yesterday, I included provision that we would have a right to inspect in 48 hours notice. I don't know if that's objectionable to the Coxes. The reason I did that is because we received an inquiry from somebody who said they might want to buy out the property and they said maybe they can solve this issue. Again, I'm not optimistic, but there's no real, real way we can do that without actually having the ability to see the interior of the building. Uh, if the court thinks you know that's unfair, I, I understand it, but I do believe we have a right to inspection under the land contract. Um, and, uh, and I don't know that the Coxes would disagree. I mean, we are looking for a solution, um, but you know, whatever the solution is, we, we, our preference is to get bought out. But if that doesn't happen, we want them out of the property. Uh, and if that doesn't happen, it should be because they're abiding by their obligations under the uh, property maintenance code and satisfying the township. We obviously don't control the township. We are essentially asking the court to make them pay us what we've been obligated to pay the township and to make the township happy on the issue of compliance. I just think that's unassailable. I don't know what else we could ask for. Um, and the alternative for Mr. Carroll is getting basically strung along for the indefinite future uh, to the point he's wiped out financially. I, it's not what he signed up for. And uh, and while you know I'm not here to, to to cast aspersions on Mr. Cox. I don't know what motivates him. He just doesn't have a right to do what he's doing and create these problems for us, either for the township or for Mr. Carroll. So we would ask the court enter our order with the caveat, as I've explained about the redemption period uh, and the um, uh, inspection right. Um, and uh, of course, your honor gets to make the decision and we abide by whatever your honor uh, would rule. Thank you. Well, let me just ask you one question. The land contract, requires that the Coxes pay the taxes on the premises. It does that, but it also says they have to pay repair costs if they create a problem. So that is explicit in the land contract. Um, it's, so there's, I, I relied on two different provisions for the assessment that was already assessed last December. We relied on uh, provision 2E, which says they have to pay all taxes and assessments. Uh, so I think that's ironclad. For the 13,850, which just happened, we relied on 2B, which says that, you know, that they have to keep the property in good condition. It explicitly says they have to comply um, with, um, in, uh, with uh, any and all building use and other restrictions, um, and they can be liable for cost of repair if they don't. So I, I submit that's sufficient to support an order from the Coxes 
to pay the 13850 In my proposed judgment, they would pay it directly to the township um, within the redemption period rather than us. We're not looking to make a profit here, but we don't want to be assessed again in December. And your honor should know that for Mr. Carroll, this was a big problem. Last year, when the township assessed his property, his mortgage company then took that to be the new tax and they increased his escrow catastrophically. Although it turned out maybe they were right that this is gonna happen every year uh, or even twice every year, uh, but it created a big problem for him. So our request uh, respectfully is that they be ordered to pay the township. And if they comply with the order, if you enter it, then we're not gonna have the issue of an assessment come December. And we do reserve our rights on the issue of assessment uh, but we're not here to argue with the township and we're doing our best to cooperate. Thank you, Your Honor. Just one other question. Assessment of the $13,850. Is it $13,850? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and that's that, coming from the township. Yes. Right. That assessment won't happen until December of 2023. The, the assessment against the on the tax rolls, as I understand it, will not happen until December. Mr. Caro did file a motion with Judge Frushauer, which we withdrew without prejudice, challenging the ability of the township to assess the property as opposed to Mr. Cox personally. We're not obviously arguing that today. If the court did grant the relief we're requesting, then the Coxes would either be paying the township directly and avoiding the assessment, uh, or they would be forfeiting uh, the land contract. Okay. All right. But There, as I see it, just so that I'm clear, maybe Mr. Lillick can answer this. It becomes an assessment at some point. It does, correct. But then there's another point, and it, it could be the same, but there's another point at which it hits the tax roll. Yeah, I, I, what I would say is this, and Mr. Lillick knows more than I do about municipal law, I don't think it's currently an assessment. So Mr. Carroll doesn't currently have an obligation out of pocket to pay the 13850. What I would say is the Coxes currently have an obligation because the land contract places upon them directly the cost of repair. Now, if, if Mr. Carroll had gone out there on his own and done the work, which I, I wish he could have done, but he didn't feel he could do so safely, then we would be able to come to your honor and say that cost should be paid by the Coxes to Mr. Carroll. That's not what happened. The township did the work. Um, we do think that it's ripe um, because assessment is not the only basis for our request. The additional basis is that they're well, on the hook. I, I follow you. But yes. What's clear in terms of the language of the land contract is that for it to be an obligation that the Coxes have to pay, you're right in terms of the repair. Get that. But it seems to me almost a more straightforward approach, maybe, is to figure out when this is an assessment. Because at some point, I guess, once the court orders it, it is an assessment against the property. In a meaningful sense, yes. Well, I, I think that's when the I think that's when the assessment happens. What then the township does with that assessment then becomes a, another issue because then the township's going to say, okay, this has been assessed against your property. Part of our remedy then is that it hits your tax rolls because it's that's the way I see it. Mr. Lillick, can yeah, you? So the way that the order is written, of course, is that the obligation is on township to provide an item by statement to the defendants uh, regarding the costs that were incurred by the township with cleanup. That was done. It was not paid. And, and when it's not paid under court order, then it becomes an assessment that is attached to the property. We have not attached it to the property at this point because we're cooperating with uh, Mr. Troika and his client to try to avoid that consequence if we can. But it would be... It would be December 31st when it would become attached as a... Uh, on the, as a... Uh, uh, an assessment, basically. Well, hold on, because that's, I, I don't want to get lost in these words, because I think there's a difference between them. The assessment, at least in this court's mind, is actually occurs 
when it's not paid. Correct. The assumption, Your Honor, yes. Yeah, I mean, that, that's when the assessment really happened. And the, on the 31st, that's when it may attach to the property and become part of the taxes. Right. The township has to make that decision and place it on the rolls at some time in uh, October, I think. Okay. So. I see, that's, that's what I'm getting at. Because the way I read the land contract, assessment and the taxes are two really, those are different things in the court's mind. So if, for example, um, you were in a, a circumstance where, let's say, somebody supplied snow removal, the snow removal, and by agreement, it maybe could go on tax rolls at some point when it's not paid. I assess it at some point and then take my further remedy to attach it to the property and it becomes part of the tax roll. So just so that we're all clear, I, I view those as very different things. I think that the assessment of the amount of the 13850 has occurred unless somebody shows me something different. And, and I think it becomes part of that land contract at, th at that point. And, and Your Honor, that assessment has occurred and it has not pay been paid. Correct. correct. So I don't know that I need to get to the issue of whether or not it's attached to the properties and on the road. I, I don't know that I need to get there because under the terms of the land contract, the Coxes would be required to pay that assessment. And so, bottom line on that, and I'll hear from Mr. and Mrs. Cox, but where the court is at this point is that 13850 has been assessed and is now part of that land contract. That's my current view of this. Mr. Cox, what do you want to say? Uh, I, I I think you can either speak from there, you're fine, or you can come up to the podium, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, I, I would like to just say that I'm, I'm some of these things I'm a little bit confused, um, but I generally have a grasp of it. And I don't mean this in a disparaging way towards Larry, Mr. Carroll, but there, uh, it, it seems like the tenor of all of this is that um, I'm, I'm, I'm failing in every way and woe is Larry. And I don't, I don't mean that in a bad way, but this assessment that was made to clean up the property before, Larry approached my wife and I about a resolution. We did not go to him to look for one. And it, he offered how that might be done. And uh, and so we were to pay him an installment of that every month on the 15th. So mid-month, we were to pay him, and he seemed satisfied by that uh, remedy. So we would pay our mortgage payment, which we have always done, and we would then pay this additional amount mid-month so that he could pay that to his mortgage company, and we would pay all the interest on, I'm sorry, yes. So what was that amount? $500 a month. 550. Uh, what? It's 550. 550. Okay, so, and I'll let you finish, sure. but, um, you know, I became a lawyer, so I didn't have to do math, but, um, if I look at that 550 being paid, um, here's what I see in the problem in that. That assessment that's been done can't be paid, like it wouldn't be paid in a year if, with the additional 550. Let me just say it one other It was 24 point. months of payments. Okay. All right. So that about gets you there. The problem with that, though, is there's this 12,000, which I can see then the, the 24 months of payments. I get that. But the 
problem that I see in it is that now I've got this 13850 that if the 550 kept going, that won't get touched until two years down the road. And then it's going to be another two years plus before that's paid. And the way this is going, hold on just one, one quick second. The way this is going is, is that if this happens again, there's going to be another assessment and it's just pushing this thing out so that this number becomes bigger. No, it's not each a time. thing. There's no question. Uh, right. And and I'm not suggesting there is under any obligation to offer us that same uh, setup in what is this new assessment. But that was, I was just giving the ground for what happened on the, that first go around. So the, the fact that, that Larry had kind of even said it to us, that he's being, um, he, he, he's losing all, all this money and he's, you know, going to fail, you know, he's going to buy them out. Um, it is still ours at the end of the day. And based on his own design, um, this would be something that wouldn't, that would not hurt him and it would benefit us. We appreciated it, his offering it to us like that because we recognized that he could have called it due. It wasn't his problem and we've never suggested that it was. Now we have this, this new assessment and that's, you know, he, something that can be dealt with in an entirely different way and he could insist that that be paid in the event that we weren't able to pay for it, um, we're gone. Um, I recognize that, but I just wanted to, to say that that first go around um, uh, and that first cleanup, we we are taking care of that, and uh, and we are doing what it is that Larry has asked us to do, and so uh, it only well, makes sense. Let me let me ask you that. Let me ask you this. Sure. Have you paid? Have you made the five? I think your your wife, Ms. Cox. I'm sorry, Ms. Cox said it was five fifty a month. Is that correct, Ms. Cox? Right. Right. Yes. Okay. Have you made those payments? Everyone. I have never missed a payment. We have okay. never missed a payment. I'm sorry. Just trying to. You guys are have been there. I'm kind of coming in, right. and I just so how many of those five fifty payments have you made? I believe February was the first one. So we would have made seven of them. We've paid 35. It's either 3,500 or 4,000 at this point. Gotcha. And that's of the 12,000. Correct. That we were looking at. Is that right? Yes. Correct. On the first assess. On the that's first. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Um, Council, do you agree with that? What? Yeah, Your Honor, I, I attached as exhibit four to my motion, the actual agreement. And I think it's important that the court hear what it says. On January 18th of this year, Larry Carroll wrote to Laura Cox and said, hi, Laura, here's my proposal. This is contingent upon no further citations and certainly no further assessments against the property in 9384 North Platte. I understand Patrick believes the property is cleaned up and he will have the house wrapped by this weekend and the house fully cited by the end of March. If this is not followed, the disagreement is null and void, and the full taxes assessments will be immediately due. So Larry extended this payment plan on condition that this problem stop. It did not stop. Instead, there was a new accumulation of debris. There was a new assessment of 13850 based on a new cleanup. The siding has still not been replaced. It was supposed to happen by March. And now, we're, Your Honor, we're only here talking about the two existing assessments were now in the run-up to a third because since the last cleanup in late July, I think July 28th, there's a new problem, which is why the township is here today with photographs and I think video to show that it has started all over again. Hold on. Well, oh, I, I'll give you an opportunity. Right. Hold on. But I will say clearly Mr. Carroll's payment plan to the Coxes was conditioned on this problem stopping. If it had stopped, we wouldn't be here. Mr. Carroll was fine with that agreement. You know, he was going to get paid and he was going to be made whole on what the township had assessed his property. 
but it was conditioned on not having further problems. They failed that condition. We're here because they failed that condition. The township is here. They held them in contempt in front of Judge Fushauer after this agreement, and they're here asking your honor for contempt again after this agreement, and the siding is still off. You can see in the photographs the township will show you today, they just didn't do what they needed to do. So we, you know, yes, it was a good deal. It was mutually beneficial, but they didn't hold up their end of the bargain. And so we're at a point where we want to and believe we are entitled to force the issue. If the court's going to go with 90 days redemption, they're still going to have three months to make this work and they'll have three months to get a buyer, um, if, uh, which would allow Mr. Carroll to be made hold and they could get whatever equity I think the property has. So they'll, they'll have time. But if your honor doesn't give us relief today, then this is just never going to stop. I mean, unfortunately, it's driven by Mr. Cox's behavior, and I don't mean that to be insulting, but it just is. And we're well past the point of believing any promise that it's going to stop. So that's our reasoning. Thank you. So I'll let you go in just a minute. I just want to get my figures right. If the total amount of assessments and or taxes, I, I have 25850 well, we, we did give credit for what they have paid. So in our proposed judgment, right. it's 24,018 and then a $20 motion fee. Okay, so I'm still lost on the numbers. I, I wanna get this straight because I have assessments and the other thing of 25,850. That's the twelve thousand plus the thirteen eight fifty. Uh, correct, but they paid some on the twelve thousand, and we gave them credit. Right. That well, and that's what I'm getting at, because if I hear Miss Cox, Mrs. Cox, correctly, they paid seven months. That's roughly correct. Yeah. Okay. So, exactly. but if they, oh, pardon. If it's not exactly, it's close. That's right. Yeah. Well, that's what. Right, Mrs. Sorry. Cox, I'm going to yeah. trust your your math a little bit on this, okay? You told me that you paid seven months. Yeah, of I the would. 550. I could give you the exact. I would have to look at my uh, app that has my receipts, but I can okay. do that. Hold on, just a moment. I'm sorry. Okay, that's fine. And just to be honest, where we did acknowledge six months when we filed a motion, right. as you don't know what happened this month on the $500. Well, she's, are you have 500 or 550? Well, 550, the 50 is for interest. So the credit is 500 for payment. Okay. And we knew that that would be the case that over that period of time, you've obviously I, accrued some uh, charges uh, that we knew it wouldn't be an exact science, but. Ms. Mrs. Cox, what were you saying? I have seven payments that I've paid him. I have receipts for the uh, the next one would be due the day after tomorrow. Okay, but you have seven payments of five fifty. Yes, sir. Would you agree that the credit to the twelve thousand is only five hundred, and that the fifty dollars is an interest type of payment? I believe that's how the agreement was right, set. How it works out. So. That then gets me 35 credit to this of 3,500, which then brings, I come to a total of 22,350. Okay, my number's a little different and it may take me a second to parse it out. Okay. It, because here, just so that the parties understand sort of where the court's headed, if those payments have been made, they certainly get credit for that. And I'm trying to just have a firm figure that we're dealing with. And if I have 12,000, I have 13,850, I come to 25,850, there's then the seven payments, which Mrs. Cox has indicated, which then if I do my math, I get 22,350. So you know, the, the difference, which is not large, is because when they did the agreement, which we contend is now null and void, 
they assumed the assessment would be 12,000, but the actual assessment that appeared on the rolls was 13,168.46. Got it. Okay. So and that is stated in Mr. Carroll. Your Honor. That, hold, hold, hold on, Ms. Cox. I'll, I'll let you. I'm just. Okay. The, what, a, what appeared on the rolls? 13. 136846. Okay. 131146. Uh, okay. 131146. Yes. 136468. Four. Yes. 136468. Four. 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 Yes, sir, Your Honor. Um, I believe, and if I'm wrong, I apologize, but that 13000 that was on the tax assessment also included the winter taxes, which are already rolled into my mortgage payment. So if that, if I'm not remembering that correctly or it's not itemized like that, my apologies, but that was a one line item I, all I, as I, tax. I, it wasn't separated yeah. out. I already paid I that. Okay, I get you. Is that right? Um, your Honor, I, I would have to ask Mr. Caro. Uh, may I ask? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Larry, do you know what the assessment on your property in December of 2022 was based on the township work as opposed to regular winter taxes? Uh, I am looking it up on the escrow. The, the winter tax is only like $800. Oh, this is no longer on there. And let me ask this. Mr. Lillick, is there any way that you can find out what was rolled over on that? Uh, maybe it will go get the property ID and go to the assessment record on the township. Might be. Can you? Because, I, I mean, if the tax is... Because I have about a. The other right. way, I might be able to call anybody at the township. What do you got? Let me look. We have an assessment. Oh, I'm not mad. We have an assessment on their taxes here. So 13,000. July. Okay. July. Okay. Last year. I don't have the assessment. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't have that. <laughs> Because it seems to me that what Ms. Mrs. Cox is saying may be correct. It, if it just was all taxes, then part of that may already be there. See if I can find out. Okay, that's fine. That that'd be good. Okay, so we'll be on a pause on this a moment. I know. Just you just keep recording. What? I jumped to one of Mr. Fink's around. Yes. All right. I was just going to ask him. Mr. Fink, were you ready on either of yours? or We are ready on the Jennings matter, Your Honor. Okay. Email that you sent over to Ms. White Wing. Just oh. He does that. I don't know why.
I have those figures from the township. You switch it to that. Okay. Mr. Carroll, what do you have as the figure? And I, I just, if, if, if uh, Mr. Troika's cell phone was the one he talked to me on this morning, uh, Township of York um, in the December issued an assessment for $11,310.50 for the cleanup. Say again. Uh, there, were, there were two assessments that they added together. One was for $11,000. Uh, and I just texted Mr. Troika a copy of this from the township. $11,310.50 for cleanup, plus $975 to the township for court ordered fine of $750. So that the fine, the fine that the courts ordered the Coxes to pay to the core, the township added it to my assessment. Um, attorney fees of $131.25 for June and $93.75 for um, July uh, for the uh, December 2023, the taxes were $858.06, which leaves a balance um, of, of all the assessments together, $12,310. $12,310. $12, $12,310. $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12, $12
was the amount that was assessed less the tax. Correct. That does not include the tax. Yeah, okay. Thank you. That's all I need to know. No, it's okay. It's okay. So then if I take that 88,040, and then the 13,850. Yes, ma'am. $22,660.40. Got it. 226640. Yes. Thank you. All right. So whether we call it an assessment, whether we call it taxes to the property, I have a total amount of $22,660.40. Yeah, I believe, believe that to be correct. I'll also check the math while the court was doing it. Okay. So, Mr. and Mrs. Cox, you were you were saying to me, so there's this agreement regarding the first part, which you kept it, but you understand the, that the problem that I see here is, is that this is, this needs to be paid. Okay. I understand that. Right. How would you look in getting that done? Well, it would, I mean, if it were a bill in front of me that was due, we could not pay it. Pardon? I said if it was like the current bill in front of me and that we had to pay, we could not pay that. Um, so I don't know exactly what we would do. If, like I said, if that was a bill that I was holding, we would, we'd have to discuss and figure something out, but it would be wounding. Okay, so, so that you, and I, I haven't ruled yet, but I need the two of you to understand that. If I were to grant the relief that Mr. Carroll is requesting, then you would have 90 days by this court's determination, when I look at the figures, you would have a 90 day period to take care of that. All right. All right. Um, I think in a certain respect, all right. Um, and I, I understand the language that's contained in the agreement regarding the 550 payment, but in a certain respect, you you made those good faith payments and I, I get that. So I might have some leeway as it regards the 8810 and that payment, right? But the 13850. I think I see myself. You agree with me? Uh, you know, I don't get that much. So I'm I'm happy. Well, no, to I mean there if it makes no sense that Larry would be on the hook for that or to arrange, you know, some payment plan for us. So I recognize that. Okay. So now to decide I have some issue with it itself, and I'm not really sure how I would go about that. With but what? Mr. Lilly say something about what he what he was required to give to us was an itemized um listing of the charges associated with the assessment. And not on the first one did we ever see anything. And this time I saw a sheet of paper, and I'm not even really sure where I saw it, but it says clean up $13,850. So it's the farthest thing from an itemized listing. I didn't know that I was due one. Okay. So, so, okay. All right. Mr. Cox, let me just stop you for a moment. Sure. Because you can make that argument if that's what you want to do. And I get the argument that you're attempting to try to make. That only goes to it being an assessment. 
ultimately this can this be put out to whatever because ultimately that's going to go on the rolls and then i'm not even dealing with whether or not they gave you an i list <laughs> right okay okay i don't i i get what you're saying but i i don't know that that really gets you to really what the solution is i don't think it does either i'm just saying it to the side that it's something i need to investigate how that or what what controls the parameters of that because it just seems to be the most arbitrary charge and and i don't know maybe maybe that's completely legit but especially for something of that okay but 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 mr cox we can if you want to we can have a full-blown hearing on that if that's what you want to do but 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 hold on a second I again, I'm not sure that that gets you there. Because let's say this, just hypothetically. Okay, we go through a hearing whether the 13850 is the correct number. And also, night maybe find in your favor and say, you know, it really wasn't 13850. It was, it really should be around 11,000. Do you have the 11,000? No, you're right. Okay. So again, I don't know that that gets you where you maybe want to be. No, I don't, I don't think it does. I don't think it does either. I just, I probably shouldn't even say that. I was just saying in my own. You're probably head. not. But <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying in my own head. And I'm just curious. Like, okay. I don't know what I do with that. Okay. Miss, Mr. Mr. Cox, let me just tell you, I'm, I try to just be practical as a judge. Sure. Okay. So the reality of this is you two want to stay in that home, correct? We think so. Well, I mean, if, of course that is. It, it, uh, there's been just so much. I mean, we've had some talk about uh, Larry's offered, or uh, spoke to my wife about this buyer. and. Um, and I'm not even sure of you know what that is. So I mean, I mean that generally the answer to your question is yes. I mean, um, Mrs. Scott, do you want to stay in the home? Is that what we're doing here, or do you need what? Are, what are you looking to do, Mrs. Up, oh, you're muted, ma'am. There, I'm sorry about that, Your Honor. Um, I think since talking to Larry yesterday, it's just raised up some uh, different options and everything with this proposed buyer with him. So I can't tell you that I'm 100% sure in what my wishes are at this moment because that changed a lot yesterday. Okay. All right, let me ask you two this in this one. As we sit here today, now knowing what you know, what would you like to see the court do? I'm not saying that I can do it, but what do you want the court to do? I, you want to take that? Um, I don't even know how to answer that. I just, I want resolution. That's, I want some kind of resolution. She just wants some peace. That's the truth. Um, yeah, I think I, I think that that's what we what we want. We want, you know, there's some kind of uncertainty that, that I think affects my wife even more than me, even though it does affect me as well. Um, I think if we just know what it is, then we'll just know what it is. And, no, oh, I, 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 no, I hear you. And let me just say this. I think it's the same thing for Mr. Carroll. All right. So as I view it, I don't know that the parties are in a different spot entirely. You want to be able to say, okay, if we have to pay X amount more per month, 
or whatever we have to pay, at least we know what we're facing. Exactly. Okay. Mr. Carroll, it's the same thing. And I dare even say for the township, but for Mr. Carroll, it's the same thing. He, <laughs> what he wants, which is why the initial agreement regarding the payment is set out the way that it is, is because he wants to know that every year or every six months or whatever, he's not facing this. He wants that same sort of peace of mind that you guys want. The township is not in the business of doing this. This is not what they're about. So they would like some peace of mind to say, we don't have to go to this property again. We don't have to go through all these proceedings and get to the point where all of a sudden we've got to do some cleanup on the property. Then we got to go through the whole process of the court hearing and all of these things. They don't want to do that either. So then the question becomes, how do we get there? Because Mr. And Mrs. Cox, and I, this is by way of example, and I'm not ordering this at this point. But if I said, okay, you can pay the $8,810.40 pursuant to the payment plan, all right, that you guys had. All right, but Joe. But that the... 13850 has to be paid in 90 days. You can't do it. So what solution do you see to that? I, I'm not sure that I heard. Did you, did you say that if we kept the original, the first part was paid, and that the 13000 You've been paying the eight, what's left of the 12000 initial one. You've been paying that pursuant to this agreement, although there's an issue as to whether or not that agreement is still in effect. I, I mean, I get that. But it, so if I gave you credit for that, at least in saying they made an agreement, they're abiding by it. There's a part of it that they didn't, but in terms of the monetary amount, they're abiding by it. But maybe as the penalty for violating that agreement with regard to an additional assessment, an additional cleanup, an additional problem, this 13850, you got to pay it in 90 days. You can't do it. Right? That, that's what I'm not here. You can't do it? Is that what Well, that's what you told me. Right. I told you that's you had correct. to pay the 13... Okay. I, I mean, it is largely correct, but I was saying, well, Mr. Cox, Mr. Cox, you know, sometimes, especially when I'm dealing with married couples, I sometimes have to listen very closely to what's being said because you're telling me it's largely correct. Mrs. Hold on. Mrs. Cox is telling me I'm correct. She's not putting any qualifiers on. So here's what I'm going to tell you. I've listened to both of you. Both of you are great people. But on this one, I'm going with your wife. I'm probably she, going with my wife. What? I'm probably going with my wife. Why do you put qualifiers on it? She's the one. She says, look, I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue about who I believe. But in terms of whether or not it can be paid, if Mrs. Cox is telling me I'm correct that it can't be paid, I'm going with that because I, I think she's right. Then we're, I thought you were right. I know. Well, you're I, just talking. Well, I know, but <laughs> I'm just saying you're asking a question 13,000. No, I, 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 I said, I didn't ask a question. I made a statement. The statement I made is you can't pay it. You gave me a qualifier on that. Mrs. Cox didn't qualify. She said, you're right. Can't pay it. Well, because it seems likely true. Okay, <laughs> you and your qualifiers. I'll just say this. Mrs. Cox, God bless you. All right. <laughs> so you can't do it. So what do you see as a solution to this, folks? It seems we will 
likely lose the house. I would assume in the event, I mean, would you agree, Laura? If, if yeah, I think that you're correctly, um, hold on, Mr. Cox. Yeah. I will certainly let you go on, but I right now I don't want to hear from you. Mrs. Cox, what were you going to say? I think that um, in the event that that was the judgment that I'm very interested, and so is Patrick, in the possibility of looking at this buyer so that we, you know, are able to fulfill Mr. Carroll's needs as well as our own and move on if if it came to that for sure. So. Mr. Troika, um, other than the 90 days, um, with reference to, I guess, the total figure really of the 22,660, is there any room to try to reach some agreement? I'm not asking for what that may be, but is there room to do that? So, um, so it, <clears throat> there's obviously a lot going on. Um, a big part of our deal with the Coxes is, is external to us is with the township. The township has its own prerogatives. I don't begrudge them for exercising those prerogatives, but we can talk all we want amongst ourselves, like Mr. Carroll did back in January, and reach all the deals we want. If this issue with the township continues, nothing's going to work. I, I would suggest, and I understand, Your Honor, is... Uh, is trying to be fair, which I appreciate, Your Honor, always is, and I try to be as fair as I can while also being a zealous advocate. Uh, you know, one option is to give us what we're asking for, put this on for a hearing date 90 days from today, and the court can assess at that point whether, in fact, the property is forfeited. Um, you know, if 90 days from, day, from today the property is all cleaned up, the township is out of the picture, they didn't pay the full eight grand, but they paid the 500 a month and they paid the 13850 Yana would be empowered equitably to uh, not forfeit the property. I I approach this from a certain degree of skepticism based on the duration of this case. And I suspect that in 90 days or 30 days or 120 days, the pile of junk is just going to grow and the township's not going to go away. So I, I would say for me, and I believe Mr. Carroll would agree, and to some degree, even the Coxes agree, the most important thing is forcing closure. Um, that might mean they lose the house. Mr. Carroll is not even sure he wants it because we don't know the interior condition. He might get it. And if it looks in the inside, like the yard looks, that's, you know, it's a Pyrrhic victory. There is a buyer out there, potential buyer, um, you know, and I, I suspect that if your court gave the 90 days, which I do think we're entitled to, it's going to force a lot of activity. And what I'm proposing is we come back, you know, as close to day 90 as possible. So that way, the court can avoid an unstoppable forfeiture, um, but we can maintain that and come back if we need to in 90 days and say, Your Honor, nothing has changed. You know, we didn't get paid or the property is still, the siding's not up, the property is still a mess, the township's breathing down our neck. That would defer to Your Honor the ability to make uh, a decision on whether to extend the redemption period or what have you. That That's my suggestion given the complexity of the situation. What I want most from Mr. Caro is a process that has an endpoint. And if the Coxes can't comply with that at all, and I suspect that's going to be where we are in 90 days, that the yard is full of debris. I don't control the township. I expect they're going to hold off on trying to get another order to clean up because they know that the effect of that is then the problem will just repeat. So I, I think if Mr. Cox, either through his own efforts or by getting Mrs. Cox involved or somebody involved can take care of the township problems, Chances are in 90 days, even if we have an order that theoretically would give us uh, an expiration of redemption and a right to possession, Yana would have the right to say, nope, I'm, you know, whatever, you're changing it, you're equitably extending it. I wouldn't be in a position to, to argue that. I mean, I could, but you have all the authority in the world to say no. And I don't think Mr. Carroll would argue it if the problem went away between now and then. I'm the, I'm the coming at this from the point of view that Mr. Cox has been given a lot of opportunities. There's still, before your honor this morning, a contempt motion against them because the problem according to the township, which is visually apparent, is continuing. So that's kind of where we're at. I, I, the court's thoughts really are quite consistent with, I think, the Coxes and Mr. Carroll. 
The one difference is I think your honor has a bit of optimism. Um, I really don't, you know, I, I, I just don't from the, from the history of this case. I think that unless Mr. Cox gets help and allows somebody to come in and control this situation, which he has not yet done in 90 days, what you're going to see is a bigger pile of stuff and an angrier Mr. Lillick, not that he's ever that angry, but still, you know, a, a more persistent or insistent Mr. Lillick. And what am I going to say? I can't say the township can't enforce its, its code. All I can do in the next 90 days is say, please, Mr. Lillick, don't, because it would be counterproductive for both the township and, and Mr. Carroll to come back in and try to clean it up again while we have this clock ticking. So my suggestion is order them to pay the 22 grand and change, which we came up with within 90 days, 13,850 would go to the township because we haven't actually paid it out of pocket. Uh, the order I prepared says you got to, you know, um, remediate the violations. You got to put the siding back on, which I don't think should be arguable. The siding's off that exposes the property to water damage. There does appear to have been some work in the last couple of weeks or month or so on that. So hopefully that will take care of itself. And then this would give your honor the ability for a final expiration of redemption to revisit the issue. So that's my suggestion. And what it serves for my client is we got a clock ticking. And if my worst predictions play out and everything is worse in 90 days, then I think your honor would be persuaded to say, tough, you've lost the house. I mean, that's your honor's call, but um, I think that would be as reasonable as anybody could be to the Coxes. And we would also have going on in parallel, a potential discussion about a buyout, which, you know, that I think we all like that to happen, but we can't control that either because it involves uh, a third party. Mr. Lilek, with regard to what needs to be done to the premises, there's the siding issue. Is that on the, the siding issue? Is that fundamentally it that it's needs to be? The siding issue and, uh, you know, the, the filing costs haven't been paid. Uh, and uh, there's a new accumulation of junk on the property. Uh, there's a picture attached to the motion that I filed that was taken the day before I filed the motion on August 17th. I have pictures uh, since August 17th uh, showing that uh, there is frankly more accumulation on the property. Uh, I, I know that the last hearing Mr. Fox indicated in this court that we didn't connect the property properly. Uh, that's not true. I have a video that shows the status of that property uh, on the day of the cleanup back in July this year. I have Mr. Toth, who's here, who affirms that, uh, that in, fact, in fact, it was cleaned up. And then again, Your Honor, uh, we're back here again with more junk on the property. Uh, and, you know, I, I will tell the court that, you know, this case was first before this court, this, this you, Your Honor. Back oh, I know. Okay. All right. There was a judgment that was entered back in 2019. It went to contempt. He finally did clean up the property. A second case was the 2022 case in front of Judge Frushauer. It didn't clean up, which resulted in the $12,000 plus assessment on the property uh, at the end of uh, 2022. And now, 2023, Your Honor, again, uh, we're back before the court with a new violation. And unfortunately, after being ordered to clean up the property and fix the siding, which is atrocious on the property, it looks terrible, Your Honor. Uh, the township was again, you know, forced to go onto that property and clean it up. As you are absolutely correct, Your Honor, the township isn't in the business. The, the township doesn't want to do this. It is a very, very rare case, which township actually has to do it and it's happened twice with the coxes your honor so i agree with mr Troy that this is this does not seem like it's going to end <coughs> by some type of compliance by the coxes it's, it, with respect to the ordinance violation how much um, fines and costs are sorry, have, how much are the fines and costs that haven't been paid well do you have a total paid the 13,000 uh Oh, you're gotcha. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Thirteen thousand eight hundred fifty dollars. Right? I thought there was another figure you were talking about. And that includes all the costs up to this page. Although we're here on a contempt 
show cause, Your Honor, I would be requesting additional cost on a finding that they have not done what they're required to do under the ordinance. I believe I'm entitled to. So, again, you know, uh, it's unfortunate, okay? Uh, you know, nobody wants this problem for them, but they're, just, they're not they're not taking care of it, Your Honor. That property looks awful. It looks trash. You can take a look at the picture that's attached uh, as an exhibit. You can I see it. Site. That was a sighted property. Okay. I don't know what happened to the sighting. It's just, it's, it's, it's it I do. suspected that it came down and was what? If the, in all of the, uh, to reattach all of the siding. This issue, we've discussed it numerous times. Tom took all of the siding. I had all the siding in the backyard. It was all laid out. I took it all down because of, it's only on one section of the house. See, I think that this is where I, I, I we, we really change paths because the tenor of this is it, it makes it out like uh, I'm just this horrendous thing and that my house is atrocious. It's one section of the house. Okay. That's okay. Right. And it's because I took it down. I insulated the wall. I, I power washed all of it in my backyard. It was laid out in lengths and and by cut angles the gable. Tom took all of it and put it in the dumpster, and he thought that was humorous. So in all of the things that say to rehang the siding, it actually can't be accomplished because it's not there. Now to reside it. Put up new siding can be done. I have purchased that. That actually should not have been uh, a, a, a charge that I had to assume, but I did get it. I have not put it up yet. But Tom took it. He took all of the things in the backyard, including my trailer. I bought it. Okay. Oh, oh, to comply with this, John, please, if you could just give me a moment. He, there, really? There's a, there's really, a that's how that works. Okay. That? Yeah. No, go ahead. Keep talking. Your Honor, nope, no, 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 let him go because he wanted me to give him a moment. So I'm gonna give him a moment. If, it, if it'll hurt me, I guess I, I won't. But Mr. Lilich just spoke at length. I just want to say that uh, my attempts to comply um, have been interrupted numerous times from Tom. And it doesn't mean that I can't have it done, but it, it, it's just fair to paint it the proper color, and that's the proper color. Okay, let me get away from the siding for a moment. Your Honor, if I just might. No. Okay. Just get away from the siding. Where does all this stuff keep coming from? I'm presuming it doesn't have its own legs and just walk into the property and sit there. Where is it coming from? I, I, I go out and I collect it, dumpsters and, and different places that, that discard whatever. Um, I sell a lot of it and I do a lot of metal uh, scrap. So I take it back to the metal yard. You're a scrapper. That's right. Okay. So... Mr. Cox, give me an honest answer. You're bringing all of this back. What's your wife tell you? She, she doesn't like it at all. Yeah. So, not here to get into all your business. But if she doesn't like it, why are you doing it? I think I may have mentioned this uh, the last time in court. It's just true. It, it's something I obviously need to get away from. But at the start of COVID, that's not that's not my question. No, it's not even an answer to my question. But I, I'm I'm 
Mr. Cop, got, I, Mr. Cop. I'm trying to answer your question. No, you're not. Yes, I You're am. trying to give me an excuse. Oh, I'm not, Your Honor, at all. Oh, you don't want to take that attitude with me. I'm going to ask you a direct question. If your wife is saying she doesn't like it, why is it still happening? Because it's the way that I can best contribute to our financial life. I lost my job at the start of COVID. Respectfully, Your Honor, this is what I was going to say. And I felt carried by my wife. And I felt a, a certain level of shame associated with that. And I found a way to contribute, even though she still carried the bag, I was in the game and I needed to be able to be in the game. Okay, let's assume all of that is correct. It, but hold on. Every time these assessments come up, you're going out of the world back. I'm, I'm aware of that. It's a fail. Well, but it's hold out. on, Mr. Cox. I mean, I'm just, I mean, in some respects, I may not even be talking the law at this point. You're going out of the world backwards. Meanwhile, this person who, as you put it, is carrying the bag is just trying to hold things together. So, And I'm going to tell you what my thought process on it is right now. You're not helping. At all. Your behavior in doing what you're doing to try to correct it is just making things worse. And I think the thing that maybe you, you're, you're appreciating in all of this, and I can appreciate Sort of the ego trying to make sure I'm providing and whatever. Through all of this, she's told you she doesn't like it. But you know what? She hasn't gone anywhere. She keeps doing what she's doing. She's my wife. Uh, she's probably a whole lot more than that. I don't know Miss Cox, but I've listened to her. And I get she's a whole lot more than that. I certainly didn't say that in a limited capacity. Let me just tell you what I'm thinking. Mr. Cox, I realize you are trying to do what you do. The only hesitation I'm having from just granting all of the relief that the plaintiff wants, as well as the township may want in this case. Do you know the only thing that's preventing me from just doing that? Because I can just rule right now. What do you think is preventing me? Probably my wife. Absolutely your wife. Like I said, I don't know her. I've just been watching her on screen here today, listening to her. And I am trying my best. Did not do something 
that creates absolute disaster for her. I've sat here and I've listened to you. I don't think anybody can say I didn't hear everything anybody said. But I don't think you realize how lucky you are because as she was giving me all the figures, she's telling me everything that needs to be done. If she weren't here, this case would have been over an hour ago. So maybe, Mr. Cobb. What you've got to figure out is how to stop disaster for your wife from happening. Any thoughts on that, Mr. Cobb? I have a lot of thoughts on you. Anything you want to share? No. I don't mean that in any negative way. But just know that, you know, I find the first song. No, I got, I got you. Mrs. Cox? Yes, Your Honor. I know it's a hard question. I kind of asked it before. What do you want me to do? If if you're um, considering uh, uh, honoring the motion and doing the forfeiture, I would just ask that um, anything with the township be paused, including contempt or anything else for this 90 day period. Um, Pat does take care of his dad and he's not going to do any good for himself, his health or anyone else if he's held in contempt. Um, and we will do our best to, to comply. He has started working on the siding. We will do our best to either comply or to work with Larry on a, on a prospective buyer. Let me ask my question in a slightly different way. Ms. Cott, you all right? Yeah. Okay. Taking out the, what I would do and then what you, how you would respond. So, what I'm really asking is, what do you want to see happen today? What would you like me to do? I'm not saying that I'll do it. I'm just saying, what would you like me to do? Well, I mean, I don't know what to do about the $13,000 judgment. So I would like somehow that not to be over my head because um, we've been paying the rest. I don't know that I, I don't know that I've got an, like I said, everything changed with the offer yesterday. Um, I just want, I just want peace. Mm. I 
I um I did talk to when Dr. when uh, Judge Freshour had us the last time. I did speak and say that you know Patrick was very vocal with me that he understands that his need to provide sort of spiraled out of control over the past few years, obviously, and that he is aware of that and is taking steps. His physician has made referrals. He's 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 seen one person he's uh waiting for a, a urgent referral over to see another person that can help him kind of work through a lot of that um so he has taken steps to say that he knows he doesn't want this kind of life for his future um and whatever they call that i don't know i'm not a professional but um i'm very proud of him for doing that and i certainly understand why he did that, especially being a nurse, because I think a lot of people's lives became disrupted by the pandemic. People handled that in different ways. Some maybe are still handling it, such as himself. Um, and, you know, I think if you have people that support you and are in your corner, you can get through it if you can admit. And he has admitted that, you know, he did get out of control and needs that help. So I think that again, putting him in contempt or anything like that is not going to solve the issue and in fact may make things mat matters worse. All I, all I can tell you, Judge Simpson, is that um, Patrick's a good man who's just kind of found himself lost, but he's a good man. I, ma'am, I don't, I don't doubt that one bit. But sometimes, and I guess we don't admit it necessarily about our partners in life. I think he's a good man. I think at his core, certainly he is. But I think um, there's somebody in his life that makes him a better man. So um, I get it. And um, Mr. Cox, you okay? Yep. All right, okay. okay. Part of really what's happening here, and I'm just going to kind of be blunt, is you're dealing with some things, Mr. Cox. Mrs. Cox is sticking by you in terms of dealing with it. And, you know, I know you know you're blessed by that, but I don't think you even understand how blessed you are by that. I do. And so... manifestations of what you're dealing with, which are resulting in these behaviors of bringing this to bringing, continually sort of adding to the property. <laughs> I think I have a much clearer picture of what's happening. That's why it continues the way that it does. With you. So, yes. Like, why not just suggest the court? Okay. I mean, I mean, I think the picture is clear. What's going on here to a great extent? I would suggest to the court that court's contempt power are broad. Okay, and under those powers, we actually have control uh, or can make orders that are necessary to try to remedy some of these issues. They don't have to necessarily be 
to to Ms. Cox, Mrs. Cox, but I just I just offered that, Your Honor, as a possible suggestion. The court can always appoint a receiver in this upon finding a contempt also. So I just offer that Your Honor has a lot of power. Oh, I believe me, I understand that. Um You know, Mr. Lilek, I, I appreciate what you're saying, but, you know, the bottom line to everything, <laughs> yeah, we're dealing with a piece of property, we're dealing with cleanup, we're dealing with all of those things, but at the bottom line of everything, I'm also dealing with human beings. And I'm going to tell you what I say, and I'm just going to be sort of cold-hearted and blunt about it. Pandemic comes, Mr. Cox finds himself in a really difficult position. He's struggling, and I'll say psychologically struggling, to try to pull himself through. I listen very closely to what Mrs. Cox is saying. Why she's there. And I'm going to put it another way. And I, you know, I also realize the contempt powers I have, I can use them or not use them. But appreciate what Ms. Cox is asking. And I'm just gonna put it another way. She is just asking, you know, out of, out of everything. She's, she's potentially about to lose her house. She's a 10, everything is just going where it's going. And really, in everything that she said, she's only asked me for two things. One is, and I'll just say she's amazing in this regard, because the first thing that she asked me for is just peace. She needs, which I took as at some point for her, she needs to take a breath. But I think the other thing is probably a lot more important that she was asking me for. And what she was asking me for is, and she doesn't want anything contempt on Mr. Cox, because really as a wife, what she's asking is don't strip my husband of any dignity that he's already thinks that he's lost. Mr. Lelick, that didn't come from out of some law book. But she asked me, it was just out of pure love for him. It's going to stand in brief recess. I'll come back and give you a decision on this. Uh, Honor, I make one comment. I think it might be relevant. I may be wrong. I thought this original case came before you in 2019, which was I just want to put on the record that if that's true, then the narrative about this being COVID related falls apart. So I say um, no, 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 no. The original case came there. But I don't know. I'm leaving the bench. So you can keep talking if you like, but I'm leaving the bench. Court stands in recess. Thank you. All right, thanks, Jim. What do you remember about that case? Oh. <laughs> Am I supposed to? Yeah, 2012. You know what? Every. <clears throat> 
All right, you may be seated. York versus Cox, as well as Carroll versus Cox. Um, here's what the court's going to do. I, I saw you take it down. Thank you. Did. Um, let me just say at the outset. Um, and I say that this at great risk, but I'm going to say it anyway. Miss Cox? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Sometimes people come into courtrooms and sometimes they believe that they're not heard. I want you to understand you were heard today by this judge. Thank you. Loud and clear. Um, I wish the ability to grant peace came with this robe. It doesn't. Um, Maybe sometimes through these proceedings, I can facilitate certain things that can get you there. But I think if I had the absolute ability to grant peace, I'd just be signing that order all the time. Um, but I can't do that. Um, sometimes to gain that, I think, though, you just need to be able to breathe a little bit and we figure it out, right? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sir. So, the court has decided to do today is I'm, I'm going to grant a judgment subject to the court's review to Mr. Carroll for forfeiture. The Redemption period, the court is even at this point going to extend to 120 days. I will set a review hearing on the matter for November 14th, 2023, 9 a.m. in person. During as part of the redemption, the total amount will be the $22,660.40. The $8,810.40 of that will be paid as the parties had agreed at the additional $550 per month. So those payments will continue throughout any period. Um, the other amount will become due. The court is reserving the right to extend the redemption period so, uh, in accord with the court's equitable powers to do so under the circumstances. Um, with regard to the citing, um, I am going to order that that siding, the siding on the premises is to be plate is to be up prior to or be the November fourteenth, two thousand twenty three date. You understand that, Mister Cox? The more well. It is part of a difficult issue, but I, I'm going to address it this way. 
Um, Mr. Cox, you are not to bring any more materials or scrap onto the premises. All right. You understand that, sir? I do. Um, without without saying it directly, because again, sometimes everybody's business doesn't need to be thrust into the into the world. I have a pretty clear or at least somewhat clear understanding of why this is happening and why certain behaviors are occurring. I will offer to the Cox, and I'm not saying that you have to, but I understand that um, Mr. Cox is making a journey in terms of seeing people and talking with folks. All right. Um, whatever um, medical or evaluations regarding that that the Coxes would like to provide to the court, you may do so. If you provide it to the court, um, you can provide that under seal, meaning bring it to the court. If there's something you want me to see and take into consideration um, in a sealed envelope, tell them that this is get directly to me. Um, I will make a determination as to whether or not it's shared or would issue a protective order so that it cannot be shared so that I can take a look at. It. I realize there are things, some of which are of a psychological nature, most likely, put it that way, that may be going on. And the more information I have regarding that, probably the better off we are in terms of the court trying to reach a fair and just resolution of it. You understand that, Mr. Cox? I do. Mrs. Cox, you, and I know you're a nurse, so you understand what I'm saying. I do. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, with regard to any type of contempt, and Mr. Lilick is right, the court's powers are very broad in that respect. And at this juncture, any type of request for contempt or anything along those lines, uh, the court is going to decline to exercise those powers today will adjourn that any type of proceeding regarding contempt to November 14th, 2023, that hearing. Um, I'm doing that because, and just so the record's clear, I think certainly the court can issue orders of contempt um, but sometimes also in term, prior to doing that, the court also has to find mercy in its heart for certain things. The plea of Ms. Cox not to issue a contempt order, and it was interesting that she picked that out out of all things, is because she does not wish to have Mr. Cox's dignity completely stricken. And this court wholeheartedly agrees with that. And I'm not gonna be a part of that at this juncture of these proceedings. I need to see more before I would venture down that path. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome, Ms. Cox. Are there any other questions regarding the court's decision? Your Honor, did you entrust the cleanup of the property at this point? Or like that? The new, of the new things that are coming on? 
stuff that I, I heard you say that no more stuff on, but the current status of the property is that there is a bunch of junk on the property at this point. So it, it needs to be removed and resolved. Um, Township prefer not to have to go back on the property and do it, but. I don't have a problem ordering that. But what I also know is, is that if I order that, that creates a greater struggle. And, you know, folks, I, I'm just going to lay it out this way, and I'm not saying this to embarrass Mr. and Mrs. Cox at all. We're dealing with certain psychological issues that can only be taken in certain steps. And so part of that's going to be not, I'm trying to take, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a psychologist. I mean, I, I'm trying to take that in steps. One of the first steps really is going to be, at least in my opinion, and just my best guess, educated guess in it, is to not have any more come on. And Your Honor, with that regard, then, would it be appropriate for us to go out there, go onto the property and take good pictures today or tomorrow so that we got a status quo? That That's fine. Take photos so that we know that that's not occurring and that that Mr. Cox would be complying with that order. Any other questions regarding the court's order? Um, Your Honor, is this something that you want uh, one of us to prepare and submit to the court? Yes, you um, may do that, sir. And uh, a couple of questions, I wanna make sure I have this right. Um, the map, 120 days from today is January 10th. Um, and I'd like to put it in running from today as opposed to when the order is entered. So I'll put a hard date of January 10th. So Correct. I understand that the 13850 will be used for the end of redemption. Uh, obviously, on November 14th, we'll have a conversation about the current status of things. Um, Mr. Carroll lives in Kentucky, so if it's okay with the honor, I would ask him to appear by Zoom, and I'll be here in person. That's right. um, and uh, I would like to put into the order, if your honor will bless this, that Mr. Carroll has a right to inspect the interior upon notice. I don't know if the concert would agree. But if, if there's going to be any parallel discussion about a potential sale, right. we're gonna, I mean, we don't want to just show up and knock down the door. We don't have the right to do that. This would be about, you know, and I think in Ann Arbor, it's like 48 hours, 48, 72, whatever. Um, I'd like to stick in a provision that we can buy notice, come and take a look, document the condition on the inside because it's either good or it's bad. And that's gonna make a big difference in how this plays out. Gotcha. Mr. Cox, you have any issue with? No. The interior inspection. No. All right. Oh, oh. Miss, Mrs. Cox, how much no. time in anticipation of an interior inspection would you need? Um, I'll, I'll leave that to Patrick because I've been traveling out of state much of the time for work. Okay. 72 hours. Notice. We'll do that. And it may have my email. Mr. Carroll has a, I think, as John may appreciate it, he's able to talk to the Coxes. Uh, I just, I don't think this would be conflictual. Um, we just want, whether it's, you know, three days or four days, whatever, the ability right. to see, um, because that makes a big difference in where he comes out this and the ability to sell the property. Um, to be clear, the 550 would be as previously treated, 500 applied against the um, the assessment 50 would just be interest. And then I didn't quite follow through, bro, but we are we are not at this point going to include the provision that the current scrap on the property be removed within the redemption period, or would we put that in? For, I mean, we could- Correct. I, what I'm indicating is that there's to be no more materials. No more. All right, and then I, we, we do have pictures from yesterday and I understand the township might go today or tomorrow and document, uh, but we have a pretty good baseline as things stand. Um, and to be clear, Mr. Lilly, you need to go onto the property or do it from the road. 
No, I mean, I think it would be appropriate to go onto the property and take good pictures of everything. You know, doing it from the road gives a perspective that, you know, it may not be accurate. Uh, the township has the right to order to enter the premises for the taking of those photos. Okay, and I'll put that in the order, but it will happen before you get the order and enter it. But I, I don't perceive there's any objection. This is just an outside inspection, right? Right. Now, if I could just ask that someone get a hold of me because my dogs. Um, okay. Just they're gonna come. Somebody, somebody let him know. All right. All right. And then, uh, and then we'll have the in-person subject to um, Mr. Carroll will we, we'll be by Zoom the 14th at 9 a.m. Correct. You want that in the order or would you with the court issue? You can put it in the order. Okay. Okay. All I, right. I think that... Um, I know I have more questions, but that's all I can think of now. All right. Mr. Cox, do you have any questions? Thank you. Mrs. Cox? No, Your Honor, thank you. You don't have any questions? No, sir. You know, um, and I'll just leave you with this, Mr. Cox. I, I think you understand how blessed you are. Mr. Cox? I do. You know, out of all of everything that was going on, a lot of heavy issues, kind of just let your wife talk. And what she said in very few words was a whole lot of things. Just mountains of information in just a very few words she was speaking. That's one of the reasons why you're blessed. But the other thing is this, despite all of the difficulties and everything, she could have, may not have been able to provide it, but she could have asked me for the moon. She didn't do that. She just asked for peace, okay? She asked that you not be held in contempt for, for your sake, right? And then through all of it, through all of it, the one thing that she wanted me to know, and it didn't fall on deaf ears, is that you're a good man. I may not trust anybody in this courtroom, but for whatever reason, I trust her. And if she told me that, I'm going to believe it. And I need you to act in accord with that. Understood? Very much. All right. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. I will send you that All right. Here. I, I wrote nothing. <laughs> Shocking. I am ready for this one when you are. It's, uh, is this the one I have? Court does call the case of uh, Strong Future Homes versus O'Neill Jennings Jr. and Mary Ann Johnson Jennings, who I almost forgot the last time, but I'm not going to. Yeah, I know. Hurry up and get to the good part. You've been watching this for two and a half hours. You want to know what happens next. I don't blame you. It's pretty good. So, there was a November... 15th, I think, 17th hearing, middle of November, which was about a week after the Washtenaw County Courts 14A, Judge Simpson, stopped live streaming. So we have no idea what happened at that hearing. Did it happen? Did it not happen? Looking at the docket, it was continued to the first week in January, January 7th, 9th, somewhere on my calendar. Assuming that they probably knew that there was stuff accumulating, again, they were giving them time to figure something out something along those lines because the person who was driving by checking things out taking pictures for me sent these and as you can see things are starting to accumulate again same things same spots everything's all the same looks the same if we're going right back to old habits obviously there's an issue so i was waiting until january figuring okay they're probably going to take some major action. They're going to assess these fines to the homeowners. The homeowners are going to end up losing the house and all of the money they've paid into this, all the equity and everything else. They, like, this is going to be a huge financial hit for them. 
then all of a sudden I see this on the news. I read the Detroit news because, you know, in Florida, we need to know what's going on up in the north. It also helps me find cases. And I read about this story of a fire. And it's strikingly familiar. And it takes me a minute. And all of a sudden, I realize, OMG, that's the hoarder house. And the local people call it the hoarder house. I didn't give it that name. The local people did. And on January 16th, at 4.18 p.m., Saline Area Fire Department was dispatched to the Platte Road home. Multiple people called 911 to report a home was fully engulfed. The firefighters were on scene within minutes. Milan, Pittsfield, and Augusta Fire Departments had to provide aid. Pittsfield utilized its tower truck to attack the fire from above. DTE was requested to cut power and gas. All residents of the home were out safely. One patient on oxygen did require oxygen from EMTs. At 4.40 p.m., firefighters reported that ammunition was going off inside the home. Most of the non-saline units were released from the scene at 7.40 p.m., so it took about three hours, and the saline fire firefighters continued to work on the scene until 11 p.m. Yeah, it's gone. There were some uh, colorful comments about the house on the Facebook post. Initially, it was reported that all of the animals were out of the house. I know you can see in one of the hoarder photos that there's a dog sitting in the yard. They did have quite a few animals. There was a cat reported missing, but that has been retracted from an updated story. So I'm assuming all pets and humans are safely out of the house. But this leaves quite a conundrum because the people living in the house were not the owners. They were technically renters as far as insurance would fall. So did they have renter's insurance? The homeowner will probably be made whole, minus the assessment fees, but he has quite a bit of equity in the home. But what's going to happen to the homeowners? Wow. Not the ending I expected in this, in this situation. And um, lots of insurance fraud accusations being thrown around on Facebook. Um, which it is kind of ironic, everything going on, you know, all things considered. But when you have that much stuff in an old house that's under construction and it's easy for things to go wrong. It's tragic. This family just lost everything right before the holidays. Be thankful for what you have, people. You never know what tomorrow is going to bring. Have a and here come these guys. <laughs> Lawrence Carroll versus Patrick Cox. And I'm calling the civil matter, which is case ending in 399 as well as all of the cases and or the zoning violation cases, cases ending in 2503, 2504, 2505, and 2506. Council State, your parents. Good morning, Your Honor. Dan Trike, appearing on behalf of the plaintiff, Lawrence Trike. And Victor Lillick on behalf of your motion. And the Coxes are present. The Coxes are present. I did receive some information that I don't know now where this stands. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm uh, confused as well. There was a request from the Congress last week in Germany in six weeks. Uh, I was not in the country and wasn't able to deal with that request, but I think it's inspired to proceed with the review here today precisely because this is a unique and messy situation and uh, we at least want to have that review. Um, uh, and see what happens. As your court, as your honor might recall, back in September, uh, on my motion for some of the position, the court in a court judgment that had certain requirements involving siding and cleanup. Um, in addition, what's most material to me today is that tomorrow, um, the taxes are required to pay 13850 under that court judgment. Uh, and if they don't, the redemption will expire. So we're up against a clock there. 
We think they should pay the 13850 It is a court order. Uh, it's important to Mr. Carroll. Mr. Carroll has been cash strapped by the situation. Uh, John, I can call um, because of half the assessments by the township. He had his own mortgage payments skyrocket, and now he's no longer has no longer has to be spread. He's got to pay out of pocket every month. A significant amount of money. So we're requesting that the 13850 be paid by tomorrow and if not the tax is all interest in the property. Now what John might be referring to, uh, and it's public knowledge, even if it wasn't you know, to the email came from Scott's on December 16th, there was a house fire. So the house at issue in this case was destroyed. Uh, as I understand it, it's a total loss, and uh, my client has submitted an insurance claim. With this carrier and insurance claim with the conscious carrier because they had to keep an additional insured, which is a requirement under the land contract. Uh, I want to know from the email from the conscious, they said that Mr. Carey requested an investigation of the fire. Well, it's that would be within his rights if he wanted to. He has not, he has a reason to make any requests. That's not his decision. If there's any investigation, it would be from authorities or from the insurance companies. We do know that insurance companies uh, are. Doing cause of origin investigations because they always do in a case like this. But we don't know anything about the status of those investigations. I'm not here to uh, speculate on, on what they want to do, what the outcome would be. Um, what we'd like to do is have the cops to pay what the court determined is due by tomorrow. Mr. Carroll has been uh, living this you know, nightmare now for close to a year. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, we'd like to see the cops fulfill some of their obligations. Um, at our last hearing on November 14th, John and I recall at that time, um, the cops had been ordered to replace siding on the house. They had not done so. That was a violation of court order. I acknowledge today they can't do so because the house burned down. Um, there are there have been several orders to be stored on that township to consolidate the cases uh, to clean up, and they had partly done so as the last hearing, but not entirely. They're still actually free out in the yard, but I think the circumstances have changed. Uh, so we're in a situation where um, I, I, I do genuinely want to hear from the Coxes. We don't actually know for sure what the plan is based on the email they sent to the honors chambers. Uh, it appears that their plan is to uh, proceed with an insurance claim and use those funds to pay out my client um, and a deal with a neighbor named Zach Mouncey to buy this property. Um, with Mr. Mouncey, this was again signed in the email sent to uh, to the court, um, there had been discussion about him buying the property. He's, I assume he's still potentially interested. Uh, he owns all the surrounding property. So we think he's a motivated buyer, but he wants to fill in a gap and have one large parcel, which he can't do until he gets his property. Um, there were some comments about what Mr. Carroll had said to Mr. Mousy in that email on January 2nd. And I want to be clear what we said to Mr. Mousy is if you pay us. If we are paid at a closing, what we are owed, which does include my fees, then uh, if not, of course we'll cooperate with legal obligation in those circumstances to uh, tender a deed and, and uh, discharge land contract. And none of that's happened at this point. Mr. Mouncey, as far as we know, has not, uh, he never did agree actually to pay 100 cents of the dollar in negotiations, but uh, no agreement at the moment. Now Mr. Mouncey has said, understandably, that he's not paying uh, full price uh, or home has been destroyed. Uh, so I frankly don't know why it's, it's one of the things that is we're looking for a way out. Uh, we think the uh, council should pay or one of them should pay back in September. Um, and um, if so, they'll take care of one major issue. And then there will uh, a necessity be an insurance process. Um, don't know how that will play out in the conscious. Mr. Carroll independently has a right under both his own policy and under the conscious policy to be paid. So we assume we'll be taken care of, uh, but there's going to be an adjustment process. And um, uh, Your Honor, I, I, I have, as Your Honor knows, I always in here a messy situation. <laughs> this is one that I, I'm in a bit of a loss. It, yes. it, it's unusual. Let, um, me, let me just ask one question. There's the, Probably shouldn't, but I want to make sure that if the Coxes pay that amount, or well, if they don't pay that amount, and their interest in the property is extinguished, does that 
foreclose another or another avenue of payment to your client, which might be their insurance? Yeah, it's a fantastic question. One that I have thought about on my travels abroad and have not had time to find an answer. So there Got is. It. No, that's uh, fair. My position will be that because Mr. Carroll is insured, that if the cost of the property, he would stand in their shoes and be entitled to full replacement costs. I do understand that Leach's own carrier is going to identify him for the actually which property which is less than full value because the cops have that equity in the property as of today. So it's a very complicated situation. I'm sitting here asking the court to award certain relief. I don't know for sure that will back on I mean, it's it's just genuinely a complicated question. I have dealt with um insurance cases uh, involving a mortgage policy and a owner policy and there's a famous quote by a federal judge the only thing worse than having no insurance is having two two and, and, this is potentially one of those situations, but we're looking for something. Um, there is an existing court order. Uh, we think it should be followed. Uh, if it is, then the Congress will be buying time uh, to sort out. I, I will say our end game is one of two things. The first is our legal right is to be paid in full. And that's whatever's owed in the land contract. And we'll state that the Congress have been paying monthly payments. Uh, they may have been late in one or two days, but set that aside. They have been paid monthly payments. As John might recall, it was the late contract installment plus 550, which is payment over time on a past assessment for the township. Or if the taxes don't pay the 13850, then we'll take, we would buy an operational law, be the sole owner of the property. Maybe we get paid replacement costs from the policy. Maybe we don't we'll find out. Who knows. Um, those are issues that are just too early. Uh, and um, um, don't have crystal balls on the house. Yeah. Mr. Lilick, anything? Yes, Your Honor. Just, uh, just so the township person you understand what the township is and what we're doing here, frankly, Your Honor. I mean, we had a judgment in this case back in May of a long standing flight. We signed the property. Uh, hearing sometime in July. We didn't comply with the uh, uh, review hearing at that time. Uh, so we brought the uh, motion for contempt. That's what's before this court. We had a review hearing in September uh, and, and in November. Uh, in the, in the, the review hearing in, in uh, September, this court entered an order that basically said, don't bring anything else on the property and do what the prior court order said, uh, which was to recite the property. As pointed out, uh, there's been a fire now, so the siding of the property is not too much of an issue at this point. However, uh, there is still light on the property, uh, and I have evidence because we did status quo pictures in September of what the blank was on the property at that time. It was increased in November at the review hearing from pictures that I had. And now substantially more increased uh, from pictures that were taken yesterday. So, Your Honor, again, townships, this is a contempt proceeding. All along, we've got no compliance whatsoever with any of the court's orders in this case. I'll, I'll just tell you that, you know, we have a claim on that property also at this point, of course, because I know. the insurance. We eventually are going to get that property cleaned up, Your Honor, in part probably by the insurance that's on the property. That's one of our expectations. I don't know that for a fact right now, but that's what the expectation is. So we're going to become whole at some point in this process. But I just want to point out to the court that what we're doing here is for contempt. And frankly, no, I know. I know why you're here. I guess the, the issue is, and I will tell you, I'm a little bit reluctant to take any action for the, any failure, because I'm sure there are going to be insurance investigations going on. And some things may not need to be touched <laughs> at this point. So just so that you know, it's not my reluctance to act. It's just. I understand, Your Honor, but I just wanted to kind of make sure that we were all on the same page. And the Coxes. Tell me what you want to know. You can come forward, man. State your name. Laura X. Yes, ma'am. What would you like to tell the court? I did send you the letter last week. So I 
15 timber. We lost everything we own. We lost everything in our children's lives. Anything that was passed on to the family. And we're living in a hotel. Um, I paid, we have paid every payment that's been due. And we are trying, we had a dump on the property the day of the fire that they been they had us hold up. We met with the investigators this week. It's finally moving to where Patrick's gonna help them do a blueprint type drawing of the house. But I, I don't know how I pay tomorrow when I'm living in the hotel. And I mean, he's wearing a dead person's clothes because he had the clothes on his back. My father-in-law, thank God people got out. We lost one animal, but we want this to go away too more than you can possibly imagine. And Mr. Mousy, I don't have a printer and it didn't come until after I left work last night, but Patrick and him met yesterday. We do have a new letter of intent that I can forward. Um, certainly won't, the number is not in there for the cost because it will be for the property minus the house. And I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, so I've heard from everybody. It stay temporarily. My order regarding the payment, and I'm doing that because I think it would be either by operation of the order or otherwise imprudent at this point, not knowing everything for that to take effect. I don't know what implication it has for the, for the plaintiffs, the defendants, or the township, particularly regarding any insurance. You know, just a clarification. I assume the monthly payment would still be made. So we're not, I'm not accusing. I just want to make sure that we're talking about- You're going to, right. I'm just talking about that that larger payment, I'm not, the monthly payment would continue. Still, so we're Pardon? Still, we're still with my job, so we're still gonna pay our payments. Okay, very good. All right. Um, I, I don't know how long these investigations take. So, and, and so I'm guessing, I, I'll tell you folks, I'm just trying to figure out and I, I presume it's going to depend on what they see where and everything else. So my inclination is to adjourn this out to oh, today, man. what's my February date? February 6th or February 13th at 9 a.m. I think I'd like to send this to February 13th, if that works. Give it basically that time frame, not a large time frame, but then we can take a look at where everybody is at that point. February 13th? Yes. And what time? 9 a.m. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so the monthly payments will continue. That other part will be stay. Yes. I have an issue with. Uh... 13th, Your Honor, I have a it's okay. We we all didn't want you here anyway. No, no, go ahead, Mike. I understand. And, and frankly, I don't think the project's position is going to change at this point too much, Your Honor. We have a lien on the property at this point, so, you know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that anybody's position is going to change until such time as we hear from the insurance companies and whatever, I mean, I, right. is February 20th available? Uh, I, I, 20th is not. I'll, I'll make it work. All right. So we'll do the 13th. If it looks like, and feel free to write to my office if you do it by that Friday, it might be that we're in a position where everybody shows up and we can't do it, or I wouldn't do anything anyway. And so there might be an agreement that we don't need that date, and I can give you another day. And one additional question: Does your need it to be in person? I have no issue coming to the court, but if my you fill out a form, then I can do it all by Zoom. And I do we have them in here? Not in here, no. But it will be in the email when okay. that goes out, and I can send it to you separately as well. Well, and, and your honor, just uh, just so the court's aware. I'm probably not going to be able to make that hearing at nine o'clock. Okay, sure. Otherwise, I'm, I'm, have, I'm, 
I have a meeting that I have to. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Either either way, whatever is going to be most convenient for the parties. Should we gain um, access to the property before then? We will continue. We have to order another dumpster, but we will continue with the pipes and driveway at the top of the hill. Okay. All right. I just. I, like I said, it's too new to know what access you have. I understood that you don't have access, so what the township wants to happen can happen. I'm not sure about the insurance issues. Um, it's just going to take some time to have all of that flush out. Plus, there's the issue of, is it Mousy, the per potential purchaser? So all of that's got to kind of flush out, and I don't think any of it can be rushed. Okay. Thank you, folks. That's Jay Cedric Simpson presiding. You may be seated. Recording in progress. Court does call the case of Calvin Johnson versus Denisha Walker. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Um, I'm Hank Graham, practicing under Rule 8.120 for the no, civil no, criminal no, litigation. No, 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 no. You're requesting permission. Requesting right. permission. Permission to practice. Yes. Go ahead. I'll let you start again. Okay. <laughs> Hank Graham, requesting permission to practice under eight, Rule 8.120 for the Michigan Civil Criminal no, no, no. Law Clinic. Um, my partner, Liam Wickens is did here. It, did you get it right? I thought I did. Did you? Close, maybe. That's why you're a student. <laughs> All right. <laughs> name? Okay. Requesting to practice under Michigan court rule. Okay. My name is Hank Graham. Requesting to practice under Michigan court rule 8.120. Uh, my supervisor, Sarah Salen, and partner, Leon Boykins, are here with me. Um, I think that's it. You represent. We represent Ms. Denitra Walker. Uh, we have a conditional order of dismissal. Permission to practice is granted. That's okay. Go ahead. Uh, we have a conditional order of dismissal that uh, both parties have signed. We've come to an agreement and um, settled the matter. And your client has approved it? Yes. You're right. It's easy enough. Cases conditionally dismissed. Right. Right. Thank signed. you so much. If you want a copy, you can pick it up out front. Bring it momentarily. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And good morning, Ms. Ellen. I'm sorry. Good morning. Thank did you not acknowledge your presence. Thank Pleasant Lake Park versus Ryan Holicki. Good morning, Your Honor. David Morris, P83922, on behalf of Pleasant Lake Park plaintiff. Have you seen them? I've not seen them in the hallway, Your Honor. Because he's been here each time. Um, let me pass this briefly and just, I want to, can we check C, 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 because every time he's come down to courtroom C, make sure. All right. Thank you. Thank you. The, is everybody here on Court does call the cases of Caro versus Cox and then the Township of New York versus Cox. Good morning, Your Honor. We're going to look for York Township and the York Township cases. Uh, good morning, Dan Troika, appearing for Lawrence Caro. Lawrence Caro, plaintiff. And where are the taxes? <clears throat> this is Laura Cox. I'm here, Patrick. Okay, there you are. Sorry. All right. 
No, it's okay. And Mr. Cox, you'll have to unmute and turn your camera on, please. I'm here, Your Honor. State your name for the record. Patrick Cox. All right. Okay, folks, where are we on this case? So, uh, it's become um, significantly more complicated. Yeah. But go well, ahead. My hope is that, you know, we're hopefully within weeks away from everything being finalized. Um, we uh, did get back onto the property in the last 10 days, and so that's been nice to, to get moving on that. Um, we do have I have it with me, I can't give it to you, but uh, the new purchase letter of intent from Mr. Mouncey um, that the property will be purchased the minute that the insurance claims are done. That's all been delayed. We were just able Friday, my insurance company was having difficulties getting policy information from Allstate under Mr. Carroll's insurance. They got that Friday. So now they can do up the, uh, numbers and schedule the, the clean out of the property, but they couldn't do that because it's all based on a percentage. So they couldn't do any of that until they had all the needed paperwork. So that was given to, to us on Friday. Uh, good morning, Your Honor. Uh, Dan Troika for Lawrence Carroll. Um, I don't really have the inside information about the status of adjustment of the claim, so I'll have to rely on Ms. Cox. Uh, I, I do know, of course, Mr. Carroll's dealings with Allstate, but my understanding is State Farm uh, has the lead here. I did communicate with Mr. Lillick, and of course he can speak for himself, but I understand that there, there has been no arrangement yet made with regard to uh, cleanup, and as your honor may be aware, uh, I am informed that York Charter Township is part of the pool uh, to get a certain percentage of <clears throat> casualty proceeds when there's a fire to cover the Clean up. From what Ms. Cox just said, I assume that they are going to fulfill their obligations, uh, but I don't know. Um, just speaking for Mr. Caro, uh, he, of course, does have uh, some frustration in the situation as he has been economically, um, you know, impacted by the ongoing litigation and the fairly radical increase in his um, own mortgage payments due to the township assessments. Uh -huh. I understand that the regular assessments, uh, including the $550 that we've talked about in prior hearings, uh, have been made and are, are current uh, through February. Uh, there's still the issue of the $13,850, um, which was assessed last year and has not been paid. I say it's, it was assessed. It was incurred. I'm not sure it was. I don't think it, I, I don't know if it was placed on the tax rolls, but it was assessed in the sense that uh, the property is deemed uh, subject to a lien to 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 pay for it, um, and there's still the balance of the original assessment, which was about twelve grand, which the Coxes have been paying off uh, in five hundred and fifty dollar installments, of which fifty is interest. Uh, although it is our contention that that was accelerated when there was a new problem um, in the summer of last year. Uh, so you know we. I have to preserve my client's rights. Our position is the property should be forfeited. Um, and at any rate, the Coxes should pay in full um, what's owed on the assessment so that uh, if they did that, then we wouldn't have to have a continued proceeding. Um, uh, all that being said, I, I understand there's a, an adjustment process in place and I, I don't know where, you know, where or when that's going to resolve. So may I speak, Judge? Go ahead, Ms. Cox. As soon as the numbers are in place, which again, my adjuster couldn't do anything with uh, without Mr. Carroll's information, our hope is that all this will be taken care of. Not only will the tax assessment be uh, paid off, so will the land contract be totally fulfilled. Um, and then we will be able to sell the property. The letter that Zach sent me yesterday said, regardless of what happens, um, it just says that, um, he has said that he, I want to find it, his intention is to demolish whatever remaining building structure or debris left to the land is there and restore the land to its natural state. I'm committed to initiating the demolition as soon as permissible by the township or any relevant authorities with the insurance. 
So we have the debris <laughs> removal covered for the fire on both ends. Um, they uh, have just let us go in to try to look to see if there's anything we can recover from the fire. There has not been. Um, we have had our own. We paid for a dumpster to be out there uh, 10 days ago so that we could start getting anything else that is not part of that debris um, taken care of over and above what State Farm is doing. And my understanding is, is that York Township is in the pool. And so our insurance did authorize that $15,000 pool payment that is refundable once the property is clean, which it will be before the sale is out. Unfortunately, you know, what started in December is us being able to sell this property to Mr. Mouncey took a tragic turn for us. And we have, we, we've been now held to the timelines and to the needs of an insurance claim and everything else. We have no intention of not fulfilling our financial debt. We have done everything we have agreed to do financially from the beginning of this. The first tax assessment should be 6,000 of the 12 should be paid as of February. Um, and, and actually the 550 is due at the end of this week um, for February. So we have maintained every financial, we just <clears throat> need the time for the insurance company to finish those calculations so they can schedule payout. And Mr. Carroll will be fully paid. Mr. Mounsey will be able to purchase the property. State Farm is going to come in and clean up uh, the debris. Mr. Mounsey has agreed to clean up any debris which State Farm doesn't feel they need to. Mr. Lella. Yes, Your Honor. Well, from the township's position, not much has changed. Uh, we do recognize the pool, uh, the insurance pool. I have communicated with the insurance agents myself. They have indicated to acknowledge it, but they have not provided any, um, you know, anything to the township to uh, basically confirm that. Uh, now, I, I may be sending a letter out to them this afternoon. We have a lien on the property for the past cleanup at this point, Your Honor. Uh, nothing has changed with respect to the cleanup of the property. We want the problem to go away just like everybody else does, you know, with the complication of the fire and everything at this point. You know, we could potentially go onto the property and clean it up, but I don't think you know, we're, we're, we're in a position to do that right this very minute, uh, just because the, the insurance company, and as, as she says, I mean, if the purchaser is going to do it, we will give them full authority to go ahead and do this. I mean, whoever can and will do it, let them do it, frankly, uh, at this point, Your Honor. But well, as I understand, the all, sta all states going to come on, do some cleanup. No, State Farm, Your Honor, I'm sorry. State Farm, I'm sorry. State I'll Farm is going to do some cleanup. And then the purchaser is going to do the remaining cleanup. So, I mean, that's my understanding, at least is what's been said. Right, right. And the question is, the question is when is all that going to get done, frankly, Your Honor? So, um, we don't know. Yeah, like the, sooner, the sooner the sooner the better, Your Honor. It's been sitting out there for an exceeding exceedingly long time, and uh, yeah, anyway, as I said, um, our insurance agent has all the estimates done. They could not proceed without the information from Allstate, <clears throat> which took the last several weeks to get. And Mr. Carroll did finally present that for us on Friday. Did they give you a timeline as to how soon, now that they have all the information, everything's going to be done? My understanding is once those numbers are done and presented, they try to close it out within 30 days. Um, and I would think that includes the part of the cleaning. Unfortunately, this, well, and fortunately, this is the first time I've ever had to go through something like this. But that is why Zach, uh, Mr. Mouncey, was willing to put that into our letter as well, that regardless of what happens, he is taking responsibility for anything not finished. Um, my understanding is that my insurance policy covers 5% of the dwelling coverage towards cleanup, which should cover everything that needs to be done. Got it. Okay. Um... My inclination is to, because nothing's ready. I mean, we're at, we're really at the same spot. We have some more information. 
but is to put this is to adjourn these out to the first part of March, check in again and figure out exactly where we are. <clears throat> I understand your position, Mr. Troika, that your client's insisting on the um, their remedy. However, I think even with the time frame, your client's going to be made whole, as I understand. I mean, I don't, it's just more a matter of everybody trying to figure it out. But if I'm wrong on that, please <clears throat> let me know. I, you know, I just have to preserve rights for my client. Um, I've heard um, Ms. Cox say, and I've never heard to the contrary, that it is the intent of the Coxes to make Mr. Carroll whole. Um, while we reserve our rights, we're also relying upon that. I assume that will happen. Mr. Carroll is under no obligation to sign over title unless he's made whole. Uh, so my hope and expectation is, is that that will happen uh, if you know no immediate relief is granted. I, I would ask Ms. Cox, uh, to send me the letter from Mr. Mouncey, just so we know uh, what's going on. Absolutely, I will send that right now. Thank you. And why don't you also send a copy to York Township, Thank to you. Mr. Lillick, so that uh, everybody has the same documentation. Certainly. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjourn this out. They say they try to close it out in 30 days. They got it last Friday. So let's shoot for March 5th at 9 a.m. Let's see if they have it done. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, mean, I don't know if anyone else would object, but I would prefer the 12th or 19th if that's consistent with the honors calendar. Uh, I would also request and I just, um, also, if your honor will agree, we I prefer to appear by Zoom uh, for everybody. I think that's more economical at this point. No, I'm going to make you all come down here. No, I'm kidding. You guys can... <laughs> all right, uh, March 19th at okay. nine. That that works for me. Thank you, that, your honor. Does that work for everybody? Me, I wasn't trying to make Mr. Troika happy at all, but. <laughs> Is, does that work for everyone? All right. It works for me, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. March 19th, 9 a.m. Thank you, folks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes. <laughs> Nobody else is ready. Court calls the case of Pleasant Lake versus Holicki. At L. The town, York Township versus Cox. Uh, good morning, Your Honor. Uh, Dan Troika appearing on behalf of the plaintiff, Lawrence Carroll. Uh, I do the believe Cox the, Cox, here. the Coxes are here as well. Yes. Lawrence Carroll, plaintiff. Uh, it, oh, yeah. oh, there they good morning, are. Laura. Okay, and I think uh, Mr. Lilick is not here. Yeah, I, I had a Mr. chance to speak is with not him. here. Something did come okay. up. I did speak with them to get an update um, from the township perspective. Uh, so we're we're we are where we were last time. Um, the reason, which you know others can speak to, maybe uh, is that the insurance companies are still talking. Um, for Mr. Carroll, it remains you know, my position to honor, which I'm stating for the record that. The um, defendants did not comply with the terms of the court's forfeiture judgment, and therefore the property should revert to Mr. Carroll as a matter of law. Um, if the court is not going to do that, um, we are sort of stuck on insurance time. Um, and I, I, I don't know that there's anything. I mean, I, I have no doubt that Coxes are pursuing that um, diligently, and so is Mr. Carroll. Uh, but none of us have the ability to force anything unless we invoke things like the statutory appraisal process or file suit, which in my judgment is just premature for that. I I, I am of the opinion that this claim will be paid in full, um, and it's just a matter of uh, the sort of norm, normal sort of, you know, twiddling of thumbs that insurance companies do. So, you know, from that point of view, if Yana would agree with my first point, uh, then we believe the property should be forfeited. 
to Mr. Carroll. Uh, if not, I don't know that from my point of view, I don't know that we're in any, any hurry to come back because there's really nothing anybody can do in the current posture of the case until we actually get a definitive response from uh, all state and state farm, which we are told is coming, by the way. Mr. Carroll calls them and, you know, and basically the checks in the mail. So they're not denying the claim. It's just, you know, they're, they're adjusting it. Your Honor, could I speak? This is Mrs. Cox. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Good morning. Um, so I, I just wanted to speak real quick updates on both situations. As far as the township is concerned, um, the the cleanup is progressing as it can after the fire, but the insurance company has given the township a $15,000 deposit that they keep until the property is clean. So in my opinion, um, with obviously it's up to you, that situation is resolved and we are pursuing the clean. As far as the forfeiture, it was based on the tax assessment, which Patrick went to the township on Friday, $13,000 ready to give somebody. They didn't know what our balance was on that tax assessment. My understanding is that it was never assessed to Mr. Carroll. So if I can pay that to somebody today, or we can pay that, I'm sorry, um, that should alleviate the forfeiture, whether I pay it at the township or if it's already been assessed, I pay it to Mr. Carroll. But we've taken care of those steps on both as far as we can until the insurance company closes this situation. Um, so, Your Honor, it certainly would be helpful uh, if they could do what Ms. Cox just indicated. Uh, I will just register my disappointment that she tried to give money to somebody and they didn't take it. Um, but I, I do think that would be appropriate. Um, I, I want to note, as I mentioned before, uh, and while it certainly wasn't intentional, um, the effect of what's happened to this case that Mr. Carroll has gotten uh, his um, his own mortgage escrow jacked up, which has actually uh, been created a huge hardship for him. So while paying the assessment isn't going to solve the current year's um, escrow issue, uh, it would mitigate the future. So yes, we would ask that they go back and take care of that issue. That is one of the running issues that's created problems for us. All right. Um, Ms. Cox, you want to give another shot at trying to pay somebody and seeing if they'll take the money? Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, when uh, Mr. Carroll had given us the numbers earlier in a previous court, it was 13500 And um, finally, Mr. Toth called my husband late yesterday and said it was 14000 something, but they couldn't find it because they kept saying, oh, it's paid because of the deposit that the insurance company uh, gave uh, them. So trying to sort all of that, I just want to make sure that we've taken care. We did ask for an advance from our belongings portion of the insurance to cover this so that it could be taken out of your courtroom. Um, we just want to finish getting the uh, insurance claim settled so that all of us can move forward. But everything should be in place that there, in my opinion, there's no reason for a review because everybody has what they need at this moment. I've continued to pay every mortgage payment and the additional five fifty a month without fail. So, if your honor isn't going to grant the relief of a simple forfeiture uh, of the property, which your honor has not done in the past, and I understand, and I'm just creating a record, um, I don't, you know, I don't doubt that what Ms. Cox said is true. Um, I, I work with enough townships, and your honor, you've seen enough of them that that sounds par for the course. Um, yes, it does. Part of my thinking here is I, I'm not anticipating or advising uh, my client to really do anything other than sort of keep some pressure on and then to, you know, be made whole. And I believe from your honor's prior comments that, uh, you know, your honor is on board with that program. Um, you know, there will be money. And when there is money, then we'll be, uh, you know, at a minimum taken care of and paid off. Um, I'm I'm at a point where I think, and I suspect Ms. Cox uh, will agree that we can put it off maybe like three months, uh, yeah. because Your Honor, no nobody on this call can control the insurance companies unless and until we have yet another proceeding, which to me is a last resort. I am trying to be protective of Mr. Caro's, uh, you know, costs because uh, he has 
he has, you know, he has suffered through this whole thing. Um, and so that's where I'm at. I bounce at like three months. Um, hopefully that we get paid in the meantime, in which case um, we will file a dismissal uh, and I'll be happy. Okay. And that, to truck a great minds think alike. I was, I was actually looking at my calendar and I was thinking three months out um, somewhere around that period in time. Um, Cause I don't need everybody coming back. Um, we thought we might have everything resolved. Um, end of July. Something. July, uh, July 23rd at 9 a.m. All right. So what I first of all will do is I'll adjourn this out to July 23rd, 2024, 9 a.m. Um, here's what I would indicate regarding the payment to the township. Um, Since it, it quite frankly, it benefits all parties. Um, I will sign whatever orders necessary so that the township can get that straight. So that Ms. Cox, you can pay it to them and get it done. I wish Mr. Lilick were here um, so that I would direct him to prepare the order. Mr. Truck, if you could communicate that to Mr. Lilick. So, I, I, that I will. The, so that the Coxes can get that paid and then they can straighten out their accounting however they want to yes. straighten out. But I want to, I want the Coxes, they're operating in good faith with everything and that, so they should be able to pay those funds over. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for them paying yeah. money. I, I I did have a uh, conversation with the township. I'm, I'm sure, uh, well, I'm confident that um, if the Coxes have money that they want to get to the township to take care of this assessment, I can get the township to accept it. So I'll work with Ms. Cox to make sure that happens. Uh, I guess what I would suggest is let me try that first. If it doesn't work, we can submit an order. But this is really, not, right. there's not a substantive issue here. It's just um, the Coxes obviously need to know what the amount is and to be comfortable that it it uh, takes care of the assessment. So I, I'm, I'm sympathetic to the issue of needing to liquidate the amount. Um, and uh, I will I will work to make that happen. Ms. Cox, is that satisfactory to you? Yes, my husband and I appreciate it. Okay, so let's see if we can get that worked out. If not, I will sign whatever order is necessary to do that. Okay, Thank folks. You. Thank you. Thank Honor. you. We'll see you July 23rd, 2024. Thank you. Thank in the you. Interim, in the oh. interim, I'll miss all you guys. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, we, we could come back for a social visit. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. I get it. I think. Carol versus Cox. Good morning. <laughs> Judge Victor Lilick on behalf of York Township. Yes, and I should have also called those York Township versus Patrick Cox and Patricia Cox. Thank you, Judge. Morning, Your Honor. My name is Gary Bankson. I'm an attorney. I just filed my appearance for Patrick and Laura Cox. Bankson, I haven't seen you in... It's been a little while. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to think. It was... Was it even? Yeah, it been pre-COVID even. Yeah. Pre I'm no longer with Trot Law, so yeah. no longer okay. seeing you on a weekly basis. All right. Uh, good morning, Dan Troy, Jane Mapp, Plaintiff, Larry Carroll. All right. So, and we um, we set this for, I believe, a status conference, figure out exactly where we were. And I don't know who wants to start trying to update me on anything. <laughs> Yeah, well, Your Honor, I, however we want to do it. Uh, I mean, Your Honor, I'm willing to, to give an update, and obviously others can contribute. Um, we set a fairly, fairly long adjournment, Your Honor, because of the insurance aspect of the case. If the court yes. might recall, there was a fire in December. Um, in the last few months since we last uh, appeared before Your Honor, uh, we, we have um, 
essentially received some insurance proceeds. There are some issues to be worked out between the parties. Um, I have an offer of pending to Mr. Bingston. Um, and uh, we're, and I, I said that last week, so I'm not upset at not having a response, but we are in that process of seeing we can reach agreement. Um, I spoke with Mr. Lillick earlier. Uh, I know the township has an issue which he can speak to about the debris removal. Um, I've given them the information for State Farm. If I believe and understand, they should be the ones dealing with this. Uh, so I don't think anyone disagrees that the township has a legitimate interest in, in cleanup and that it's taking a long time. Um, but I, I don't know that anyone, anyone's asking for relief today. Um, there was a township assessment on the property. I will note that, uh, although the Cox is indicated they would pay it, uh, my client did pay it. Uh, and um, that is part of the ongoing discussions we're having with the Coxes. So I, I think, and while I can't speak for the other attorneys, we are doing what we need to do to get this resolved uh, outside of court. Uh, being that insurance companies are involved, you know, naturally is taking, uh, it always takes longer than you expect, even taking into account that it takes longer than you expect. So um, here we are. But I, I don't, I don't imagine, or at least I don't predict that this is going to require judicial resolution. Uh, with that, I'm I'm happy to hear what uh, fellow counsel have to say. All right, either one. Of you. Judge, judge, yes. uh, uh, if I could, uh, on on the issue. Uh, so, looking at the judgment of possession, there are two payments. There's there's a uh, a cleanup in the amount of roughly thirteen thousand that was assessed as part of the amount that was due under the judgment of possession after land contract forfeiture. That's an assessment that was uh, to be, I guess, levied by the township for the cleanup. That assessment, as far as I can tell, hasn't, it hasn't been assessed by the township. Uh, Mr. Troika mentions that his client has paid it. I don't find evidence that it was ever assessed. And I'd be interested. I mean, if, if Mr. Troika has proof that Mr. Carroll paid it, I'd be interested in seeing that. But I, I, as far as I can tell, the only amount that was levied was for the cleanup amount, which the other cleanup amount, which is also part of that judgment of possession, uh, that was from the 2022 winter taxes. That was paid by Mr. Caro, and uh, pursuant to that judgment of possession, my clients are paying that off at the rate of 50, 550 a month, right? Uh, and and continue to do so in addition to paying their actual land contract payments the entire time since this case was filed and since the judgment of possession was entered. In my opinion, as I look at it, I think the judgment of possession has been satisfied. I don't see, there, there's been nothing assessed uh, as far as that, that payment goes. Now, my under, uh, as, with respect to that payment one and the judgment of possession. Now, the township- You're talking the 13,000. The 13,000, yeah. Now, the township does have, and is holding a deposit uh, for the fire cleanup in the amount of how much was it? 15,000. The township has a deposit and that, that came out of the Cox's proceeds for the loss of their personal lives from the fire. Okay, the issue, so, so I, I don't, and, and, and I don't see an assessment from the township. So there's nothing for the Cox's to pay and nothing as I understand it, Mr. Carroll could have paid even though it looks like they're, Mr. Carroll's asking for that. Uh, uh, and now if it's been paid and there's been an assessment, I, I'd be interested in seeing proof of that. I just, when I go to the township website, I don't see an assessment for anything like that. Just the 550, the amount that Mr. Carroll did pay, the other amount. Um, and that was assessed to the 20, 2022 winter taxes. The other issue is this. State Farm issued checks in the name of the Coxes and Mr. Carroll. Uh, my clients can't negotiate those checks or do any cleanup work because Mr. Carroll needs to endorse that, those checks. They're, they're on, those checks are being held by your public uh, adjuster, the, the public adjuster. Um, so those checks need to be negotiated. And I, I, so far, I, don't, I haven't received any confirmation that Mr. Carroll is willing to endorse the state checks so that my clients can negotiate them and do the cleanup work, which is obviously there's, there's, there's money involved there, you know, to, to do the cleanup work. But like I said, there's $15,000 on deposit with the township for a fire cleanup as it is. 
So I'm just a little confused. I, I think, in my opinion, I think the judgment session has been satisfied. Uh, I probably would file a motion to that effect if the court wants me to do that, but or, or wants to set this further down the road so I can do that. But uh, other than that, we'd like the, the checks to, to be uh, endorsed uh, and negotiated. Yeah, right. I, I can speak. Your Honor, can I can I respond first, Dan? Just for just so that well, be, be, before you go, Mr. Lilly, Mr. Troika, what about the checks? Because that's I guess. Uh, which oh, oh so your honor we've sent a settlement offer on monday july 15th uh stating that we would negotiate the checks based upon an agreed allocation we're not going to sign a check over to the Katzes without an agreement as to what our allocation is so that's the negotiation that's ongoing the specifics are uh, obviously, settlement negotiations, but the, the Coxes don't have a right to 100% of all insurance proceeds. Uh, I don't think they're claiming that either. So it's, it's not an issue of refusing. If they want to negotiate the check and give it to us, we'll sign it and deposit it and hold the money. Uh, but my guess is they're not going to do that. So we either reach an agreement on how to allocate the insurance proceeds, or there would have to be a, a circuit court proceeding on that. I don't think it's going to come to that, but um, we're not refusing. The only thing we're not willing to do is give them everything because they're not, they're not entitled to everything. Got it. Okay. All right. Yes, Mr. Lilly, go ahead. Yeah. So, Your Honor, just so it's clear, the, the township has been paid that $13,000 from the previous cleanup, and it is holding under the insurance withholding uh, program 15500 for the current cleanup, which has not occurred. Okay, so from the township's perspective, we tend at this point to contact the insurance company. It's been in excess of 120 days since we received that deposit, and as I understand the the law, uh, you know, with it, if we don't receive some notification that the property has been cleared within that 120 days, that we then we can proceed to use that money to clean up the property, and that is what the township's intent is at this point. I intend to contact State Farm, the insurance company who provided that check. Um, you know, over the next day or so, hopefully, and I'll have that conversation with them, and they will either hire a contractor uh, or the township will do it itself and use those funds to take care. And at that point, Stronger, the township will be will be made whole. Basically, will be done. Okay. What about the thirteen thousand dollar assessment that was paid? That's, that's that, as I understand it, Your Honor. That's been paid to the township. Yes, right. and, and it was never it was, it was never an assessment. Okay, because uh, we were going to put that onto the taxes, but I had a conversation with Mr. Troika early on, and we agreed not to do that uh, in order to prevent a, a problem with you know his client, Mr. Caro having problems with his mortgage company, which happened the first time right. that we assessed. So, so, and your, your honor, if I might. Yes. Your honor, the, the, the amount that I paid on that second assessment to the township exceeded $15,000 because the township also added their attorney fees and other costs associated with, with coming back to court and doing that. In addition, I had to do that to prevent my mortgage company. My, my payments went up to almost $5,000 a month because of all of this from, from a little under 2000 because they were anticipating that this was an ongoing occurrence. And the township was also going to put another lien on my property which showed up on my credit card report. This has absolutely destroyed me. But that's all I have to say. I'll let my attorney continue from there. Okay. Um, yeah, perhaps if I might, very briefly. The, yeah. The, so, so uh, if that, from what I'm hearing, if the township has been paid and they're not loving an assessment, then I certainly would sort of reiterate that the judgment of possession has been satisfied. I mean, because there's that thirteen thousand amount in the judgment of possession is not going to be assessed to the taxes. The township has indicated that it's been paid. I don't think it's been paid. Them. Right. Carol was paid but, by the insurance proceeds. But I, 
I think, and please somebody correct me if I'm wrong, the third for the preservation of the parties in a lot of ways, they didn't do the assessment. So I don't know that, at least on first blush, that it would be fair to not treat it as such. They they did that for a reason. And I recall when I'm just listening to Mr. Carroll, I remember his dismay and complaint from the, I don't know which hearing it was, because the assessment had been done and it triggered certain things with his mortgage cover. So. Uh, and, I, and I understand from the first assessment that's you know, the, the 2022 ta winter taxes where there's an assessment levy, but it, with respect to the 13,000 that's in the judgment amount that my clients have been ordered to pay, that's paid. That's paid by the the the, the uh, proceeds from the insurance, which which was taken out of money that was was. was well, I don't know. Is the thirteen paid by the insurance? No, that was paid by Mr. Carroll. I don't. That was separate. Yes, that was. Paid that by wasn't Mr. paid Carroll. out of the insurance proceeds. My clients had thirteen thousand taken from insurance proceeds for their personal items, for uh, and that deposit was sent to the township. Well, Your Honor, I know this came up in the last hearing, and we don't, if there's 13000 that was paid by the taxes, then somebody is overpaid. Um, yeah. we, by we, I mean Larry Carroll personally went to the township or sent them the check to fully satisfy that assessment. And to be clear, it wasn't assessed on the rolls, but as Your Honor might recall, it's in the court's order, and Mr. Carroll didn't, he didn't want it on the rolls again because of the problems. So we did pay it. Uh, and we paid it out of pocket. Uh, and if there's another thirteen thousand paid, then the township uh, is uh, is sitting pretty. But that would be very inadvertent. Well, there's. I no guess it'd be up to the Mr. Mr. Lillish to 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 say whether they're they're holding twice the funds. The, 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 there there's been no double there's been no double payments, Your Honor. We are holding fifteen thousand five hundred dollars on the insurance under the insurance withholding program for the current cleanup okay the property that has been destroyed by fire now uh, and it, it's been deposited with the township under that insurance withholding program that's that's it that there's been no double dipping from the township your honor well that okay so then the 13 so either it, it just seems to me that the scenarios would be that the township has twenty six thousand which Mr. Lilick is saying they don't. And I'm, I'm not talking the 15.5. I'm talking about the 13,000. That Because what the Coxes are indicating is, is that they paid it. Mr. Carroll is indicating he paid it. And so, I, I mean, this, this would seem to me to be something easy to figure out. I, yeah, I would agree. We got We got to get to the bottom of that for sure. I mean, because somebody's going to have, I would hope and pray, some some type of paperwork regarding those payments. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely have to get to the bottom of where their thirteen thousand went then uh, that, that was taken out of their insurance proceeds and 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 sent to to the to the township. But would you agree that? If that 13 is not there or evidence of the 13, then they would owe the 13 to Mr. Carroll. If Mr. Carroll can show that he's paid it, yes. Right. If Mr. Carroll yes, shows sir. that he paid it, which is acknowledged by the township. All right. Then I would just need they to would see some proof yeah, that it's been paid so, to Mr. Carroll. So it seems to me everybody's just got to come up with their paperwork. And or, figure out what happened to theirs. Or and if out. there was some other type of withholding that just happened to match the numbers that it wasn't for that. Yeah. So that's another possibility. Yeah, I, I'm just I, I'm just saying, uh, Laura is indicating to me, you know, they went to the township, they asked the township, do we owe anything? The township said, no, there's nothing. Well, and the, and town the right, and the township's gonna say that right. because Mr. Carroll had paid it. Right. So if, yeah, it, and then, so it's, it's yeah. I, I see the confusion. There's nothing bad in the town. There's nothing incorrect or bad in the township's sure. answer, nor in the question that you asked. 
It's what happened in between that causes the real issue. So, so the only other thing I want to say, Judge, and just, just put it on the record, uh, my understanding is that there may... Uh, Okay, so the uh, you didn't retain, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, there's an attorney, uh, public, an adjusting, uh, public adjuster, isn't he? Yeah, they may file an interpleader action in circuit court. I just want to make this court aware of that. An interpleader action to figure out what the proper allocation of the insurance proceeds are between the the amount that State Farm paid uh, in terms of the claim, but also Mr. Caro's Allstate insurance policy, which has paid Mr. Caro, I think something in the range of one hundred and forty thousand, which he used to pay down his mortgage. So uh, and so, we, we got to figure out how much my clients ultimately are going to wind up owing on remainder on the land contract, which is part of our settlement efforts. But that gets beyond, it seems to me it gets beyond an actual summary possession action for land contract forfeiture. Oh, the, actual, <laughs> the actual allocation and proper, the proper allocation of pro rata shares of insurance when there are multiple policies uh, involved on a property. Got it. So I just hoping I'm unburdening the, the court a little bit. So the court doesn't have to so, worry too much. Could all go someplace else. It may. It may wind up being in circuit court on an interpleader. <laughs> I mean, no, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. And and when will you know if that's happening? Very soon. Very uh, soon. I'll probably in the next week, I'll know if there's going to be an interpleader filed. All right. Uh, my, my own thought, Judge, maybe we, we set this out. We'll try to figure out what happened with the proceeds uh their proceeds and and you know get proof that mr carroll paid to the township which is fine then we would owe mr carroll as long as they had their money back as long as we can figure that out and then then i think the judgment possession would be satisfied yeah and i mean yeah to be frank we, we do have a, a legal position that if we don't settle which is different from what mr bingston said i don't think we need to resolve that today uh, it is correct that I've been speaking with uh, an insurance attorney who I already know I have a good relationship with about the state farm proceeds, and we did make a specific settlement offer, so we would expect to get a response to that, uh, and if we can't reach agreement, then it probably would be an interpleader action uh, in circuit court, uh, but I wouldn't say we're there yet because yeah. we, haven't, we haven't gotten a response, and I'm not complaining about that. Um, but I anticipate further negotiations before that happens. Got it. Okay. All right. So how far did you guys want me to um, put this out? And how many twists and turns? How many twists and turns can happen in between <laughs> that time? Uh, all of them, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> End of August, if, if 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 that's something the court would agree with, and I would only say then. Uh, we would know if an interpleader action was going to be filed by then. And also if I need to file any kind of a motion or I don't need to file any kind of motion, I would know that, be able to set it on either prior to or during our review. Uh, does the end of August work for you guys? Do you think that's good timing? Or I was thinking, quite frankly, the first part of September. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll be out that week before Labor Day, and I suspect that's going to be a tough week for other people. I, I would appreciate, you know, first full week or, or mid-September. That'd be fine. That'd be fine, Judge. Mr. Lilek, will that work for you? Yeah, it should work for me, Your Honor. Thank you. And, and if I could ask, uh, I hope. With, with the township, is the township looking at proceeding with the cleanup on its own on an, uh, uh, soon I, I, or... or not I, I hope i hope that uh, you know by that date okay it will be it, our, our issue will be resolved one way or another your honor like i say i'm going to contact the insurance company and if they don't put up a, a contractor to uh take care of that 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 cleanup at this point then i think that the township yeah. is entitled to go ahead and can do it on their own. yeah the taxes exactly. indicate they also have an estimate for cleanup and they already have a contractor but again of course it was a question of 
having the money to do the cleanup themselves, but I know the township's holding it. So we'll, we'll try to get that resolved. Okay. Yeah. And Yana, just to, to be clear, my understanding is debris removal is a separate benefit under the policy that's not part of the property payments that, that have currently been made to both parties. So I would expect State Farm to do the cleanup on its own dime. Um, that's that's normally how it works. If it turns out that State Farm says they already used the cleanup money for the checks they gave to us, then we'll, we'd, we'd like to be told that because we're not trying to stop the cleanup. Um, but again, I don't think that the, the property um, payments that have been made are, uh, include the debris removal. That's a separate policy benefit. Got it. Okay. My understanding is, is what they've been told by a State Farm judge is just that the, 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 the Cox has been told by State Farm is they pay for the cleanup and then State Farm reimburses them for the insurance oh. proceeds. So it's, that's 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 what they've been told by State That's the holder. Yeah, and that's well, the holder. Well, well, and understand, okay, that the money that the township is holding is is for the cleanup in case it doesn't get cleaned up. If that property gets cleaned up the way that it's supposed to and brought into compliance, then that money goes back to the insurer uh, and then potentially and then actually to, you know, to the insurance. So, I mean, that's... Yeah. Understood. Okay, if the three of you cause two more attorneys to come in here, I'm going to have a problem with each of you. I'm just letting you know. Okay. Sure enough. Okay. I'll adjourn the matter to September 10th, 2024, 9 a.m. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you Judge. Have a good day. Thanks. Thank you. State of Michigan's common session. All those having business before the court draw near, the honorable judge today, September 10th. You may be seated. It's just, not really. Where are they? There's um, some on Zoom and some. Oh, so, okay. Lawrence Caro versus Patrick Cox. Good morning, Good morning Adam. Uh, Dan Troy, get paid. Lawrence Caro, and there are eight cases. Lilick and also Township of York versus Cox. And Victor Lilick on behalf of York Township and those matters, Your Honor. And Your Honor, Gary Banks and appearing on behalf of the uh, defendants, Patrick and Laura Cox. All right. Okay. I'm almost afraid to ask, where are we on this? <laughs> Your Honor, I, I, I can give you at least a little of what I know, and I, I think there's been progress of a sort. Uh, first of all, with respect to the fire cleanup, that's happening. I think it's starting today. Uh, it's been the first half of the payment for that was paid by the Coxes to the uh, to their contractor, and Mr. Lilick is is aware of this uh, with respect to how that impacts the funds they are holding uh, for the fire cleanup. But the fire cleanup is, I believe, commencing today. Uh, the dumpster is already on the property. Uh, second thing is. Uh, Mr. Cox has with him a check, but you know, for the purposes of paying that, uh, the amount that Mr. Carroll paid to the township for the second or for the second cleanup. Uh, so Mr. Carroll paid a certain amount to the township for a cleanup, which is part of our judgment of possession. Uh, Mr. Cox, they stand or the Coxes stand ready to pay that amount to Mr. Carroll. Okay. And then the last bit is my understanding from, uh, the public adjuster uh, is that State Farm, which issued some proceeds in this matter, uh, is, is intending to file a circuit court action to determine how those insurance proceeds are to be split. What? Another court case on top of the seven there already is? Are you serious? This will literally never end. But in the 22nd, Circuit Court in Washtenaw County, Judge Julia, I'm not going to try and say her last name, it's spelled O-W-D-Z-I-E-J, received the case of State Farm Fire and Casualty Insurance versus a whole lot of people, the Coxes, um, Mr. Caro, and it looks like a public adjuster. 
It is just getting started. There have been no hearings. We probably won't see the hearings because I don't believe this judge streams on Zoom, but we will keep up on what is going on. Maybe they'll be finished by like 2028 or so. Wow. Uh, uh, who, you know, who gets what insurance proceeds based on their interests in the property? Uh, so between the, between Mr. Carroll, Mr. Carroll and the taxes. Got it. Okay, it's between those two, not the township. Correct, correct. Yeah, it would not be with respect to how much the township gets. It'd be between the Coxes and Mr. Kara. Yeah. So with that understanding that, that there's likely a, an interpleader action coming down the Pike and Circuit Court, I would ask this court to maybe just put this over again because we don't want to, we won't know how the insurance proceeds are to be divided. And I think that impacts ultimately what happens here uh, and that so that that's my uh, my two cents on that all right thank you mr Reichen. your honor i might just briefly give you the township's perspective on this at this point uh it is correct that i just learned this morning that there is a contractor out there who is uh cleaning up the property as the court knows uh the township is holding on to uh, a little over fifteen thousand dollars uh, for that cleanup process that was uh, given to the township by the state farm under the uh, fire fund. Uh, the, what the what the township will do is upon the cleanup of the property, complete cleanup of the property, uh, the, uh, the funds will be paid to the contractor directly once the job is done and anything that is remaining uh, uh, in the township's uh, escrow account uh, will be forwarded over to uh, Cox, Mr. Cox. Got it. Okay, so it's not like he'll be reimbursed and then township pays it out, see what the whole job is, and Mr. Cox may get back a certain portion of what he paid or may get the whole thing back. Okay. That's, yeah, well, that's let, correct. Let me, let me ask this, and with regard to the interpleader action, do those funds, any refund on that, is that going to be part of the division of proceeds or not? Okay, I must have asked a good question because I, that, I don't know. Better saying nothing. <laughs> you know, Your Honor, I did consider that, and and I don't know the answer to that. Okay, I will tell you that uh, you know the statute provides how the funds are to be dispersed once the, they're in the township's possession, and what the what the uh, the, the statute uh, provides for is that payment of the contractor uh, upon completion, and then everything else gets returned to. The uh, insured, basically, is what the statute says. Now, that being said, uh, I, the, the dispute between uh, Carol and Cox, uh, I mean, I don't know exactly what that is. I'm not going to be involved in that, probably. And if it's more appropriate, I suppose those funds Oh, I could... think you'll be involved. But go ahead. <laughs> well, well, the funds will be can be re reimbursed to the, to the uh, insurance company, but there's not a provision in the statute for that that I've seen, so... Okay, I mean, it might be six of one half of another because yep, exactly. e even if you returned it to Mr. Cox and it would have gone into, say, that pot of money, then that's going to be math at the end. Right. So, okay. All right. Okay. And we say the best for last, Mr. Troika, if Mr. Lilly goes down. Thank you, Your Honor. So uh, actually, this morning is the first I've heard that the Coxes have moved forward with regard to debris removal. Uh, and it sounds like today is the first the township has heard as well. I'm, I'm pleased that that has happened. Uh, I uh, have had good communication with Mr. Lillick and would ask to continue that. Um, Mr. Carroll, of course, wants to avoid a repeat of you know past situations where he was, um, you know, personally had to make good on these types of um, expenses. <clears throat> sounds like this is taken care of. Uh, I was also told by a separate attorney, not on this Zoom call, that State Farm would commence an interpleader action. Haven't heard that from State Farm directly, but um, you know, if that's what they choose to do, so be it. Uh, I would agree with Mr. Bingston that we probably should just put it over. I can't think of any particular relief I would ask for the court today 
Uh, we have had settlement conversations. Those are sort of ongoing back and forth, um, but nothing to state about that here. So uh, there has okay. been progress. Uh, it's a slow, tedious process. I think the minute the house burned and insurance got involved, it was definitely going to be a long, long haul. That's where we are. Um, but I would agree with putting it over and giving your honor a further update uh, at a later date. Okay. Very good. I don't have a problem doing that. Did they give an estimated time of cleanup? Oh, for the cleanup. I think I think it was something. I, I don't. Weeks. I don't have an estimate. I don't have a copy of a contract. I think it was less than two weeks. Yeah. Less than two weeks is what I thought I heard. Okay, less than two weeks, so it's not going to be right. They'll do it pretty minute. quickly. All right. Um, any suggestions as to how far you want me to go? Well, Your Honor, the interpleader action, obviously, that, that's got to be filed. We've got to get at least some ways into that before I can feel comfortable. I can come back here and tell you anything productive. Uh, so uh, as far as this uh, progress on how these funds are going to be dispersed or, or split. What, what if I put out 90 days? Is that too far? I mean, I don't want to have to drag you guys back if there's nothing. I'm, I'm fine with that. I, Your Honor, I'm fine with that as well. Your Honor, would the court allow us to appear by Zoom? You know, I haven't seen you in person in a long time, Troika. So, you know, I don't, it's better if Lilic is by Zoom. But, you know, you, I don't know. Yes, <laughs> we'll permit that to happen. Yeah, um, I, I look better on Zoom. <laughs> is, that, is that right? Okay. All right. Well, you're looking good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, and, Your Honor, let me just ask, uh, if, if the property is cleared and cleaned up and the funds that the township has are dispersed, is there any need? Uh, does the court want to hear from the township at that point also? Um, if there's nothing to say, if, if what I would like to have, I guess, is on the township cases, then if council can get together and there's and a final order that the court can enter, then okay. I wouldn't need to hear from the town. All right, fair enough, Your Honor. Thank you. Hey, if that happens before then. So we can do that. Date. Is that 90 days? I get over 90 days to Thanksgiving? Yeah. Really? Okay. All right. <laughs> That's fine. November 12th. 9, 9 a.m. 2024, 9 a.m. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Um, Thank you, sir. And, Yana, and Mr. Yeah. Banks, then, as I, it, well, I was joking about it, but they, they're appearing via Zoom. If you desire to do so, then let the court know and we'll, we'll do that. Thank you. That. All right. Thank you so much. Thank oh, you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you, Yana. Thank you. Do that.